All right, here we go, Matt Barnes. Welcome back. Yeah, part two, man. Huh? Part two. How uh, has it been? Man, it's been, it's been, been like three years. Has it? Man, the whole world has changed. Yeah, <laughs> the whole man. world has changed not, since not, our last interview. Not for the better. Yeah, yeah, definitely, definitely a few, <laughs> a lot of speed bumps along yeah. the way. <laughs> well, we can't start the interview without talking about what's happening right now in Boston. <sighs> so it was announced today that uh, I made Yudoka has been suspended for an entire year. Mm. Now, you spoke about it on Instagram. Yeah, last night. Last night. What is your overall take about what's happening? Uh, my overall take was I spoke too soon but without knowing the facts. Mm. Um, you know, I thought, you know, my point of view was if this was a basic uh, situation where, you know, he had slept with someone in the organization, I thought it was a little harsh. You know what I mean? I thought, like, this is very common, not only in the NBA, but across all corporate businesses. And I thought a year for a suspension was a lot. But then after I made my post, someone literally called me right after maybe two minutes later and told me what happened. So I had to backpedal, man. Like I took down my post and today I came up and, and kind of just let people know, like I, I misspoke, you know, in the media, I think too often people misspeak or, or, or say the wrong shit, but never apologize when they're wrong. And I just don't move like that. So after I found out what happened, I had to back up and, and, and assess the situation. And, you know, I'm not going to say what happened. If it comes out, it'll probably come out because it's, a, you know, everything eventually comes out. But I just can't support, you know, some of the stuff he did. So that's why I kind of had to backpedal off that and, 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 you know, let people know I was wrong for jumping out there without the information. Well, yeah, I know a few things about the situation. And without getting into any details, it's not so much that he slept with someone, but who he slept with. That's, that's potentially going to come out and so no, forth. Yeah, that, that's and what I'm gonna, hearing too. So uh, yeah, like yeah. Said, if, if what I heard is true, it's just like, yo, you on your own, bro. I came back that. Yeah, it's pretty crazy. And as someone who's owned a business now for, I mean, what, 20 years now, of like TV, 15 years, I've never understood the whole sleeping with coworker thing. It's just in a world full of women and men and, right. you know, billions of people, why mess around in a dangerous environment yeah. like the place where you work? It's the whole shitting where you eat yeah. situation, literally. Like, yeah. why Why even do that? I've, it's never even come in my head to do something like that because I'm like, it's just too dangerous on so many different levels. Yeah. Yeah, just the, the power dynamic, you know what I mean? To each his own. No one's claiming to be perfect. I'm far from perfect. But, you know, just the whole shit and where you eat is is a tough situation you know what i mean so that's something that i've always tried to stay clear of um because now it's you know this is life after basketball and they're waiting for you to slip like that you know what i mean so i'm come on man i'm good on all the teams you played with how many total nba teams you played for eight eight teams uh-huh you saw this type of thing happening i saw stuff going on you know what I mean? Like from top to bottom. And that's what I said in my post. You know, I've seen from the owners to the dancers to the and everybody in between. You know what I mean? It's kind of like its own little reality show, you know, and and again, to each his own. You know what I mean? No one's claiming to be perfect. Um, but, you know, like I heard, it's it, it's not about what he did. I guess it's about who he did it with is that it's, right. is, is really going to, um, you know, kind of flip the game upside down when it comes to this instance. Because like I said, this is not something that's, you know, only the NBA. It's it happens in the workplace all around. But, you know, like I said, it's not so much the act. Well, have you yourself messed around with a cheerleader or Oh, back in my younger days, yeah. Back in my younger days. For the NBA. Yeah, yeah, back in my younger days, you know what I mean? It was some teams have rules, some teams don't. I mean, oh, well, some but, teams are actually cool. You right, can sleep yeah, with cheerleaders and whatever. It just kind of is what it is, you know what I mean? Okay. But this is back, you know, you got to think early 2000s, you know what I mean? So I was, you know, I was, you know, if I talked to a cheerleader here and there, it wasn't really that big of a deal. But mm -hmm. just as far as kind of moving up further than that, that was never my cup of tea. There was too many women that, like you said, weren't even in this workspace that, yeah. you know, we can hang out with. Right. Well, um, Nia Long started uh, to trend uh, on Twitter. Uh, apparently now the news is coming out, I guess she had moved to Boston two weeks ago with their son to look for a new home. They're actually home shopping this whole time. And he knew about this from months ago. So he kind of didn't say anything. Um, you know, and this is a tough place for a man to be in. Does he want to tell his woman 
and the the mother of his child who he's in a serious relationship with that he's been messing with other women at work and it's about to come out like mm. there's never really a perfect time mm. to really bring this up yeah I mean, as messy as all my relationships have been publicly, I, I'm, I'm not going to touch this shit. Like the family side, <laughs> I'm going to leave alone because I have my own fucking train wreck of personal family shit out there. Right. I only touched the sports side of it. You know what I mean? Because okay. that's what I get paid to talk about now. Obviously, the family side is a whole nother yeah. situation, man. And, you know, like I said, I, like I'm going to post that, man. I pray for everybody involved because it, it's heavy. You know, it, it's a lot of shit going on, man. But the family side, I'm not touching. Yeah, I feel you, man. She should have just stayed with Ice Cube. <laughs> I'm just saying. Crazy. <laughs> you know, he he put hands on, on Debo 4 and really went to bat. You know, um, mm. J. Cole's No Role Models started to hit the charts again during man. this whole this whole thing. This I'll crazy. talk for you. You don't have to say yeah, that. Like I said, that's I'll just, talk yeah, for just you. The, yeah, the fa- like I said, the family stuff is just tough, man, because I've yeah. been through all of it. You know what I mean? So that was the one side I didn't want to touch. A lot of people, when you, you, know, you look in the comments and the blogs, that they want to touch the family side of it. And that's a dynamic that, again, you know, that's like me calling the kettle black. I can't talk on no shit like that. Right. So uh, I stay away from the family side. Now, I feel you. And... It's kind of a shame because last year was the coach's rookie year. Oh, it's great. He's a great coach. And he went all the way to the finals with it. Great coach, man. You know, like great coach. <laughs> shut down the Brooklyn Nets, got all the way to the end. And, you know, listen, the Warriors yeah. are the Warriors. <laughs> yeah. Anyone would have had problems with, with that team. I don't yeah. care who you, you put in to, right. to swap them out with. But like his first year, he went all the way to the finals and there was like so much anticipation you know and they have a strong squad and the city's behind them and everything else like that to be suspended for an entire year so what are they going to do like the assistant coach is going to step up and, and coach or are they going to bring in someone I'm else guessing. i don't know i mean you know boston will figure out a way but you know it'll, it, it, it it if if everything comes out he'll be lucky if he coaches in the nba again to be honest with you Oh, you think it's that bad? I think it's pretty. I, I think it's pretty heavy, man. It's, it's it's just some stuff you can't do. You know what I mean? Because some stuff you can't do. So it's just like again, not judging to each his own. I've made plenty of mistakes, but if everything comes out, it it could get extra hot in the kitchen for him. Yeah. Well, I hope it all works out. We're all fans of both him and Nia Long, and. You know, I'm always for families working it out. So hopefully they can work it out and stay together as a family. They have a child together uh, at the end of the day. And um, yeah, hey. man, praying for everybody involved, man. Exactly. Well, then there's Robert Sarver huh. and the Phoenix Suns. Now, you made a video about this as well. Now, you said something interesting. You said that you've actually been calling this guy a racist yeah. for the last 12 years. Yeah, no, no, I've seen this guy's hand before. Okay, so show me just... what you've seen. Uh, just the way he moves, the way he moves with his, his, his nose up, the way he talks to people, the way he talks down to people, um, the things he's, I have personally heard any racist remarks, but I was told by someone very close in the organization, some shit he had said about me when I left and was weird because he was always really cool in my face. What did he say about you? Nah, I'm, I'm going to leave it here because like I said, unless I know it was fact, okay, I, can't, fair I, enough. I can't really go on it. But then I've heard, you know, from my former teammate who was a head coach there, some real racist shit, you know, and then that's my brother Earl Watson. He could tell his story if he wants. So I always knew, never personally seen it, heard he spoke on me in a racist way, but wasn't fact. So I never really put that out there. But then, you know, talking to my brother and he's been telling his story, you know, I mean, Earl has a situation, you know, up there. So... I've seen it. I, I've heard it. Um, and you just, you, when, when you're around him, you can tell he's just a, he just, he doesn't carry himself the right way, man. So, you know, for, for, for what he said and did and, and all the people that came out and spoke with him, um, I'm glad that he's decided to sell the team because there's just no place for not only racism, but, you know, sexually harassing and being inappropriate with people and, and, and all the, the laundry list of shit he did. You know, they said they, on record, they had him saying nigger five times, but if you said it five times on record, that's a regular word in your vocabulary because there's no way I believe you've only said it five times your whole life. So there's just a lot of stuff that he did and, and, and maybe someone in his position shouldn't be doing. And I thought the NBA suspension was light and, you know, everyone started making noise. And man, when people make noise these days, luckily, when, you know, everyone's pushing for the right thing, things normally happen. So, um, you know, I think I speak for a lot of people involved in the organization of, you know, the NBA that, you know, we're happy he's selling the team. And, you know, hopefully maybe a minority owner could be a part of, you know, a group that picks it up. Well, uh, 
I mean, clearly, if he got caught saying the N-word five times, that's not the only right. five times that exactly. he said it. He probably uses it in his regular vocabulary. Uh, and as I'm learning more about the situation, he sexually harassed men and women? That's what, what I heard, what, man. what does that mean exactly? I don't know. I wasn't there. But I heard he, you know, dropped his pants and in front of people and said inappropriate things to people. So, again... I wasn't there. I can only kind of speak on, on on what I know and what I was told. And, you know, I've been 12 years removed from that organization. Amazing organization. Great city, great fan base. Loved everyone else that worked there. I just knew he was a fun, he was funny style. So I just never really fucked with him. Well, you know, like you mentioned before, originally it was supposed to be a, a $10 million fine and uh, suspension for one year. Right. And people were kind of comparing that originally to the Celtics. Right. And that was my that was kind of really my argument. I'm just like, you're putting these two things on the same platter. And to me, Robert Sarver. So it shows one thing that the NBA underdid it. And I thought initially that the Celtics had overdid it. But again, you know, as you learn the facts and as things continue to come out, because all people can do is speculate until you kind of know what's really going on. Um, but then, you know, once you hear the Boston shit come out, I'm just like, oh, OK, well. And then, like I said, the Sarver stuff continues to come out. And, you know, I've heard it from reliable sources and, and, and close personal friends about just the way he moves. And I had a situation with him, too. I want to say like in 2011 or 12, after I left there, um, I was in a game and I was talking to this little 13 year old kid and his dad courtside. And, you know, me, I'm someone always talks, but it was like a fun back and forth, kind of like trash talking, but nothing bad about it. And someone was shooting a free throw. And someone, and I heard someone behind me say, don't talk to my fucking fans. I'm like, who is he talking to? I turn around and it's Sarver. Huh. And I'm like, motherfucker, I'll slap the shit out of you in front of your wife. And like- Wait, wait, you said that? To Sarver. Oh, well, you're, you're no longer on the team I wasn't though. on the team uh -huh. no more. I was already <laughs> I was about gone. to say, yo, this, yeah. sounds, this sounds wild. No, okay. so he was trying, I don't know if he was trying to be funny or not, but when I looked at him, it was like a deer in the headlights. And I said, I'll slap the shit out of you in front of your wife. And his wife was sitting right next to him. And he told on me, and I got fined like 25, 25 or 35,000 for Sheesh. that. So, but like I said, it was a funny like back and forth literally with this little 13, 12, 13 year old little boy and his dad, we were all laughing. And I hear someone say, don't talk to my fucking fans. I'm like, yo, who is this? And it's his little punk ass in his little corner seat. So hmm. just don't deal with the dude. I'm glad everything is working out the way it is. Well, LeBron was one of the voices that spoke out against the one year suspension because yeah. he said that just wasn't enough. Right. Uh, and after they actually announced that he's going to be actually selling the team, LeBron said, I'm so proud to be part of a league committed to progress. Braun, Exclamation yeah, I mean, point. Braun is so instrumental to this game, not only what he does on the court, but off the court. You know, if you remember when the Sterling stuff happened with our team um, in 2014 or 15, whatever scene it was, Braun was the first person that really kind of spoke and made it okay or kind of open the doors for athletes to talk about things other than sports you know before that social media and, and if you look back on social media is really just about kind of what what your world is about you know no one really spoke on stuff outside of our game so to speak i mean some people did but i'm not talking about the majority like it is now but i feel like from braun came out and spoke against um sterling then it kind of opened up the floodgates for everyone else to kind of talk about stuff more than basketball you know what i mean and then again obviously his, he knows his voice carries weight along with chris paul who spoke up who's a player on that team draymond green uh you know four-time champ he's you know very uh you know out here in the media space and now and spoke up and like i said it was it was you know everyone echoed the same thing i mean for what he did a year and 10 million dollar fine it's a lot of money but that was a slap on the wrist you know he should have been you know, he shouldn't be in the league no more. And again, like I said, I'm glad everything is working out the way it is where he's going to be a have to sell or choose to sell the team. Right, because you were playing for the Clippers when the Donald Sterling yeah. recorded phone calls mm -hmm. came out. Yeah. How was that first locker room? <laughs> it was crazy. You know, it's funny. The, so the, we're doing a, a show with FX on this. They made a series about it. Oh, really? Yeah. So oh, man. Uh, that should be coming out here late this year or early next year, but just about kind of towards the end of that season. It was just, you know, to me, I've been through so, like, I've been through like real racial, racial shit. You know, my high school was nearly burned down. The KKK had a green light in my head. I had to move to a different neighborhood. So I've been through some real racial shit. So when I heard what he said, like, to me, I'm just like, this dumb motherfucker got caught on tape talking to this girl. Um, it didn't really move me. You know what I mean? Like I said, it's the, the, the way his, his thought process is, and there's a lot of people like him. And at the time I said, he wasn't, the only one that thinks like this, he's just the only one dumb enough to get caught. You know, there's plenty of these older white men who own professional teams that are on the same 
same mentality, same way being raised, you know, look at black people as lesser, look at minorities as less. So, um, but back to our team, it was just wild because you got to think we're Lob City. We feel like we have a chance to win a championship. We know we have a young up and coming Warriors team and, and, it, and it took every single, we beat them in seven games, but the next year they went on their dynasty run. You know what I mean? So we <laughs> felt like we had a really good team and a chance to win it. So, you know, when he did that, it just brought a bunch of unwanted attention uh, in the playoffs and we had to try to focus on, you know, people calling us sellouts and what we should and shouldn't do. And how can you play with this guy? And do you want to win an NBA championship is what we're thinking in our locker room. So. It was crazy, but I think it's dope that this, uh, you know, story is 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 going to come to life for the kind of the world to see the insides, the inner workings of kind of what went on. Yes, it's going to be like a documentary series. Like I think it's a six episode mini series. Sheesh. <laughs> yeah. Okay. You personally, you know, playing for Donald Sterling, did you see anything? No, not at all. No, and you know when people when people say you know how can you speak? You played for him. I'm thinking like. A lot of you motherfuckers work for people who hate you too. So what the fuck are you talking right. about? You know what I mean? Right. So. Plus, you know, well, I mean, for example, John Sally, who's a regular on the show, who's played on a bunch of teams, really explained to me that when you're a player, it doesn't even matter how high of a player you are, you don't really talk to the owner. There's there's a separation. There's the coach, on. there's a general manager, and then yeah. there's the owner, and the owner's, you know, He's busy doing other stuff. Like usually the, you know, the sports team is like a small part of his portfolio. Yeah. Well, I think there's a, there's a handful of owners that are really into the game now. And for, huh. I would agree with John for about maybe 75% of that, but you know, the bombers and the Cubans and the guys that are there front okay. row and talk, there's some interaction there. Yeah. Uh, normally it's only for the superstars or the high level players. You know what I mean? I was always just respectful when I seen the owners. Yeah, I know he didn't really want to talk to me. I wasn't tripping. I keep it moving. You know, you can talk to the stars. I'm not tripping off that, but there are a handful of owners that are kind of really interactive. Um, you know, but outside of that, it, it is, you really don't deal with them. So, you know, when it came to us playing for him, it wasn't like we were playing for Sterling. You know what I mean? Like we took pride in, you know, just trying to bring some life to a franchise that has been the doormat of the league for 30 plus years. Right. I mean, have the Clippers ever won a... No championship no. at all. Have they ever been to the finals? No, we won the first Pacific Division championship with that Lob City team, and then Paul George took them when Kawhi got hurt. Paul George took them to the Western Finals. Um, so that's as far as they that's they've as ever far been. As they'll go. Yeah, I mean, you guys are like uh, like Atlanta. <laughs> <In a way. laughs> I think the Clippers. I mean, the Clippers could stay healthy this year. I mean, with Kawhi back, he's looking big and, and, and strong and rested and you know Ty Lue's a hell of a coach over there PG picking up John Wall who has, who has a lot to prove I think the Clippers are going to be you know someone to be reckoned with this season okay so so Robert Sarver after that one year suspension 10 million dollar fine got a lot of backlash it seemed like the NBA stepped up and essentially forced him to sell the team I don't think anyone voluntarily sells no. yeah I mean NBA we never team. know what goes behind closed doors but then you see you know when, when money starts talking you know when their lead sponsors start dropping you know, mm -hmm. I want to say one of them was at and and another one was going to drop, PayPal. you know, yeah, PayPal. Once you start getting big sponsors dropping, it's just, you know, you're putting your team in a bad situation, in a bad light, you know. So whether it was his decision or people in his corner, um, you know, they ultimately made a right decision. He made, he made a mistake, but it's, you know, it's an unforgivable one. And again, the way he carried himself and moved around, you know, people knew what this dude was about for a long time and he finally put his foot in his mouth so you know like i said it, with everything he got he deserved but you know on, on the flip side he's gonna be you know i want to say he's a 30 percent. he's a majority owner so 36 percent, i think so he's gonna get a lot of money out the situation so well he made a statement about it he said as a man of faith i believe in atonement and a path to forgiveness i expected that the commissioner's one-year suspension would provide the time for me to focus make amends and remove my personal controversy the teams that I so many that I and so many fans love, but in our current unforgiving climate, it has become painfully clear that it is no longer possible. That whatever good I have done or could still do is outweighed by things I have said in the past. For those reasons, I am beginning the process of seeking buyers for the Suns and Mercury. Someone wrote that shit for him, <laughs> except, except 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 like the part where this you know cancel culture stuff he spoke on, but that 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 was all scripted. That's not even how he talks or moves. So I don't even listen to shit like that. Yeah, everyone's focusing on the unforgiving climate part of that part of that statement. Yeah, basically saying in cancel culture, yeah, it's, so it's, it's no one could forgive me. Yeah. Boo hoo! Yeah. I have to sell my team. Yeah, I mean, it's like I said, he, he he put his foot in his mouth one too many times. Well, I had Nick Young here yesterday. Swaggy P. Swaggy P. What do you say about getting falling out the ring? I don't think he really got hit, did he? 
Um, Not that he faked it, but I'm saying like it. Like I think he looked like he got elbowed and kind of lost it, and then yeah. fell out the ring. He, the way he described it, I mean, he he kept it 100. He basically, since he's not really used to boxing, mm-hmm. he said that when he fell back, he thought that the the ropes would kind of catch him, <laughs> as opposed to kind of open up. <laughs> right. He actually right. fell out of the ring. That's right. what he said. Yeah, no, that's, that's real. That's what he said. I was rooting for Nick. I seen him at Dray- uh, I seen him at Draymond's wedding the week before, and some dudes were fucking with him. But I was in his corner. I was like, bro, you you know you got a lot riding on this, bro. You got to you know yeah. you got to represent for us. So, now I respect him for stepping in there, man. Like people understand. Like I, you know, I I used to box for you know training for this. Like boxing is tough, and then it's not even so much the boxing. It's about how to react when you get hit. You know what I mean? How do you react when you're cloudy? You know what I mean? So that's the, that boxing is a is, is a real professional sport, and you gotta be careful stepping in that ring. Oh yeah, no, I've I've done some boxing. You know, when I was younger, and like getting hit with an uppercut, Man. you're just not really. You can't prepare for no. it. Like when suddenly you're staring at the ceiling. It has to happen. Like, and then you're like, what do you do then? Yeah. yeah. What, what do you do then? No, I was, you know, I, I saluted Swaggy for for even stepping in there and, you know, wishes he, he could have got that dub. But Right. I mean, originally he's supposed to box Blueface. But because of the antics, yeah, with Blueface, Blueface is, like, and Blueface Chris is Chris out here boxing without the ring. He's <laughs> that dude, man. Her and Chris, him and Christian Rock. Yeah. yeah, I mean, literally, the, the way it happened is that everyone's supposed to get a big bag, mm-hmm. right? I'm not going to talk about numbers, right, right, but right. I, I know what these numbers are. I was supposed to get a big bag. Oh, I no. mean, like, mm-hmm. Nick Young was already spending the money in his head and was about to buy a car <laughs> and everything else like that, was already going, you know, shopping and everything yeah. else like that. And, and like three days before, the the boxing commission basically with all the bullshit that Blueface has been doing just announced that we don't want him yeah. in the ring and he doesn't represent what we want boxing to represent. So they had to basically scramble and find someone. So they got this TikToker named Minicon and um, everyone got a haircut <laughs> in terms of the pay. Mm. <laughs> Everyone's pay was slashed mm-hmm. massively. And ultimately this happened. And a lot of people, you know, when it comes to basketball and boxing, Nate Robinson has sort of been the poster boy for this kind of thing. Do you know yeah, Nate personally? That's my dog, man. I feel terrible for Nate. <laughs> that's that, my that guy. Was, that, was the that was tough. You know what I mean? Like I said, it's the same thing. Like, you know, you can have fast hands and look good hitting the mitts, but, like, how do you respond when you get hit? And I think that's what a lot of basketball players do. And a lot of people don't understand. Like, getting hit and being cloudy and then trying to, you know, figure out and protect and, and get your wherewithals back. That shit is a whole nother story. So until that really happens to you and you understand that, it's tough to box. Right. I mean, when you saw Nate get in that ring. Oh, Nate. And, and look, he was in great shape. No, he was great muscular. Oh, great. He, Nate, he was, Nate was born in great shape. Yeah. I mean, really like yeah. a real, like a strong build, stocky. Mm-hmm. Looks like he went to the gym, but you could tell he was not getting in the ring. Yeah. leading up to that fight. No. He probably assumed that his sportsmanship and athletic speed, ability yeah. was going to get him through. He's probably thinking, oh, this white boy ain't nothing. Well, you, won't, you haven't really seen the Paul brothers in full swing yet until, until that no night. pun intended. And then when he got knocked out, Yo, the memes and he got started within out. like 10 seconds. He got knocked out too. I mean, that's the thing. Like we live in a society today where, you know, you want to salute Nate for even getting in the ring. But then like the flip side, like he'll never live that down ever. Oh, no. I mean, they had, I mean? Uh, they had baby Simba trying to wake him up, no, you know, from was, the Lion King. It was all bad, man. <laughs> you know, the memes were so bad, I, man. I was, I was, you know. Was, you know, they had, uh, what was it, Boys in the Hood? You want to see a dead body? Yeah. <laughs> like, it just like, yo, I, the, the how quickly the meme started. And I think that the, I think what added to it is that he's never done an interview or spoken about it or, or anything else like that. Yeah. I've been trying to get him in for an interview for, since then. And yeah, no, I haven't I'm, been able to I'm get gonna, anyone. I'm going to get him on all the smoke so he can talk yeah, his shit. Yeah, get him on all the smoke. Yeah, he definitely needs to talk because Nate's a good dude. Like I said, I play with Nate, real good friends with him, you know, a joking, laughing type dude. And like, again, I, again, I salute him for even getting in the ring. Like I said, this boxing shit is no joke, but it, he would like, He'll never live that situation down, which is, you know, it, which is tough, you know, from little kids to grown ups to it, it's it's always going to be a laugh for people. And I'm just like, damn, was it worth it? Well, I mean, after that, like. I saw all these basketball players just say, hey, listen, we're not meant for boxing. Like, could we just stop getting into the ring? Well, I was saying that shit before, like I said, because I, I boxed and I'm just like, yo, this shit is not a game, man. Like, unless you know what you're doing, don't don't do it. Okay, so you personally, if you got offered a box? It would have to be a lot of money and the right person. Million dollars? 
I don't know if that's enough. It's not enough. No. Nah. Okay. Mm-mm. And it would have to be someone I really don't like and I really don't dislike anybody. You know what I mean? It's like I'd have to like really want to – like when I fight, I fight people I don't like. Like I want to try to hurt you. You yeah. know what I mean? So it's, You I and Doug Fish are cool now. So. Yeah, me and Fish are straight. So it's, <laughs> it's, so there's nobody for me to really like turn my anger up to it at, at, at this point in my old ass 42-year-old age. So you probably won't see me box. Really? No one? Nah. No one out there at all? No one that you – on the court, y'all nah. got at it? Personal Mm-mm. insults thrown? Nah, man. No? I'm, I'm okay. A, I'm a father of six, mm. doing great after basketball. Like, I don't need to do no motherfucking boxing. I mean, what's your whole take on the whole blue face Chris Sean Rock it's, train wreck? It's, it's it's young love, man. And it's. Oh, you know, that's more than young love. That's. that's <laughs> you can't wild. just that's, scratch it off as that. <laughs> no, it's, no, it's, no. It's, it's again, you know, again, man, whenever you. I was someone who put my relationship, you know, on a on a on a back in the day who put it on the show for, you know, the the world to critique and pick at, you know what I mean? And I just, you know, with the both of them being young, when they get a little bit older they're going to look like, back like, yo, why the fuck were we doing that? You know what I mean? But it's it's something you got to go through to learn and you know, they, they they got their situation and if they're, you know, they're making a little bit of cheese off it and they feel like it's worth it, I'm not I'm not mad at it. I mean, uh Chris Sean Rock, I think, beat up his mother and his sister at one point. <laughs> uh, recently, he knocked out her father. Hey, Pop, I, I mean, it, looked, like, it looked like Pop swung. I saw the video. It looked like Pop swung first, and then uh, right. Blueface came around with the old dope fiend. <laughs> Didn't even see him coming, but it was, you know, like I said, it's just because everything is caught on camera now, man. So it's just like, and it looked like they had, like, TV cameras there. So if they caught that on camera, it's just like this. It, it, it's a crazy. But that's, you know, that's where they set the bar. You know what I mean? That's what, unfortunately, what, that's what reality TV has black folks out here doing. And it's it, it's, it's unfortunate because it's it's a stigma and a stereotype that, that, that we live into, live up to. You know what I mean? When they try to need these people to this, this and that. When you see stuff like that. And, again, I'm not perfect because, again, I've been a part of that reality mess. Um, yeah, so I mean, you've like, had your drama. We talked about it last man. time with, you know, plenty of drama. Gloria you know showing I mean? so, up yeah. in the car situation yeah, at the so school. I'm not, again, yeah. I'm not trying to act like I'm perfect, but now, you know, I'm 42, you know, removed from those situations. You look back on it, you're just like, yo, that shit was stupid as fuck. Yeah, but you're not knocking out her father. <laughs> No, you know no, 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 I'm not even comparing the two situations. She's not missing a tooth. My shit, like, my, you know, yeah, I mean, no, my, no. Just, there's levels, yeah, no, right? There's, there's, there's levels. levels, and I like feel I said, like this level man. has really got, I mean, like, I and Tina ain't got shit on these two. No, for real, for real. <laughs> no, for real, come on. <laughs> Mothers and fathers knocked out, and sisters yeah, beat it's, up. Hey, it's, a it's missing so, tooth, like, a missing yeah, tooth, like, yo. That's wild. You know, yeah, you I mean, did you hear about the whole thing, how she broke in his house? And wrote a note in blood and <laughs> stole his car and like yo like this is not just young love. Some Bonnie and Clyde. This is yeah, serious yeah. dysfunction this that is, we're getting to see played yeah, out on yeah. the internet. Serious it's, dysfunction. And it's like I said, it's a, it's a you know it's a it's a, it's, a, it's a tough representation too. You know what I mean? Because you see, I'm sure a lot of young girls and young boys look up to both them in their respective spaces. You know what I mean? And you see that kind of stuff. And you know uh, me who has teenagers and and, and kids even younger. You know, you don't want them to think that's the norm. You know what I mean? But it's just, it's, it's, this is a crazy world, man. You just got to figure out how to navigate through that shit. I mean, do you think anyone, any little girl really looks up to Chris Sean Rock? Say, when I get older, I'm going to lose a tooth. And I mean, uh, I'm going to yeah. beat up my boyfriend's mother. I mean, and, uh, everybody's got fans, man. So I don't, you know, like I said, I don't know either of them personally. No, so I, I don't I can't either. speak on them, but everybody's got fans, man. So like I said, it's, you know, people are always watching. Well, you know, like I said, we had Nick Young uh, here yesterday, and we talked about the whole D'Angelo Russell recording <laughs> situation. That's tough. <laughs> when you saw that come out, I think everyone's jaw just dropped. That's tough. It's tough. The situation. fact that you're sitting here with your teammate talking about stuff you only talk about with a close friend, if anyone, and they're recording you the whole time, and this recording comes out. You're engaged to Iggy Azalea at the time. Mm. That's tough. You, and, and he brought up like, oh, did you ever get with Amber Rose? And he's like, oh, nah, she's friends with my girl. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like he's putting other people in the situation and somehow that video got released, which which caused, you know, I mean, it, you could say that that had a, an effect on Nick Young's career overall, right? 
Uh, yeah, I mean, Nick did a few things that... that he that, did a few that, things, yeah, and that Nick was one of them. Yeah, he did a few things that he probably shouldn't have did when he won the championship. He said some wild shit on national television. The, the, the cocaine thing? Yes. <laughs> we talked about that. He goes, it was just a joke. I, yeah, I probably I mean, shouldn't have said it. But, there, yeah, there's there's, there's <laughs> just some shit you don't... There's, ju- there's a poor judgment along yeah, the way. Yeah, <laughs> you know, so it's just, like, you know, it's, it, it's unfortunate because, you know, you look at your team like a brotherhood and the homies and... You know, you never think you got to worry about, you know, what you say around around your guys. But, you know, that situation is and I'm a fan of D'Angelo Russell, the basketball player. I don't really know him as as a, as a person off the court, but it was, you know, hopefully it was a learning experience for him. Um, but shit, if Nick should box anyone, it should be, be him. If you yeah. go box anybody. Right. And get squashed that shit and put it behind him. But, yeah, it was when it first came out, I was like, whoa. I mean, it was really hard to try to keep a, a team together. Or something like that happens. Of all the teams you played with, was there ever like a real hatred between players? No. Nah. Or was it like? I think there was dysfunction. I mean, I, I think on every team there's egos first and foremost. Everyone's right. men, and people are making a lot of money, and and it's a it's an alpha male type of sport. So there's going to be a lot of egos, but. I don't know whether that was like kidding around and being funny, or or a dislike for somebody. You know, it's just. I've never really seen it, it on my teams really get that bad. Like I said, there's been dysfunction and, and kind of dislike, but nothing to that level, I think. Yeah, no, this is this is next level. <laughs> <That's> right. <laughs> this right here is something else. Yeah. And, you know, Gilbert Arenas is a regular on my show now. And the level of terrorizing that, that Gilbert has done to Nick, I've Not never just seen. Nick, Nick's son, Nick's like- Oh, yeah. Gil, yeah, no, Gilbert's a wild man, boy. <laughs> Gilbert is a wild man. <laughs> no, I mean, uh, we talked about this yesterday. Nick said that Gilbert has done about one hundred fifty thousand dollars of damage to his house. He's uh, come outside and <laughs> he's had no wheels on his car. He's on cinder blocks. <laughs> he stole. Oh, he man. stole his four by you know his four wheeler. Never returned it. Oh, man, I, I mean, this, yeah, yeah, he Gilbert he is, would fight his son. Gilbert's a wild card, man. And he got a lot of money, so like That's material shit like that doesn't add up. Register him, like <laughs> motherfucker. Not everyone has the amount of money you have, so that kind of damage oh, yeah. gonna hit the pockets. But yeah, no, Gil is Gil is a wild card boy. Is that rookie thing real? Like, have you ever had to be the rookie for one of the OGs on the squad and had to go through a bunch of bullshit? It's real, but it never happened to me. My, you know, my rookie year team, we were all young with the Clippers. We were uh-huh. all the same age, so it wasn't really no hazing like that. Um, but yeah, that's definitely, you know, some teams take it more serious than others where you got to pay for these expensive ass meals or do a bunch of crazy stuff. But, um, you know, fortunately I didn't have to do none of that. Fair enough. I noticed recently that you were part of the, the NBA 2K3 launch. Mm-hmm. You yourself, are you a serious gamer? No, I don't play video games at all no more, unfortunately. Okay. Before? Yeah. I used to be back in the day. Okay. Mm-hmm. So recently I put a tweet up. And I said, as an adult, playing video games for long periods of time is a form of depression. If you don't believe me, ask yourself this. Think about the 100 greatest moments of your life. Do any of these moments include <laughs> video games? Probably not. And you this took some comes heat for that too, right? from a lifetime gamer. You've seen this? You took some heat. I think I did see this a couple weeks ago. This was the biggest tweet <laughs> in my entire life. Really? 24 million impressions. 15,000 responses. Mm-hmm. Uh... 900,000 engagements. Kevin Durant chimed in. Mm. Ocho Cinco chimed in. A bunch of these gaming world champions have chimed in. So you, you saw that. It hit <laughs> your radar. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> me personally, I stand behind this shit, right? Like for me, when I look at the 100 greatest moments of my life, I could just take my 100 greatest moments with women alone and <laughs> video games will not add up to that, right? <laughs> Uh, it, I mean, it's different, you know what I mean? So, I mean, I really got bullied off the sticks, to be honest with you. Like, uh, my ex-wife, the twins' mom, like, as she was pregnant, I used to game all... It was back before he was even gaming. It was just the homies downstairs getting high, playing video games mm-hmm. all day. Mm-hmm. So, I, I can't say... If you say 100 Greatest Moments, I definitely 
remember in the man cave with the homeboys after a workout, smoking weed and playing Madden all day. And those are some of the funnest times of my life. So not necessarily playing the game, but the camaraderie, the camaraderie kicking the it, friends, smoking, right. playing, playing Madden for bread. Like that shit was fun to me. But like I said, I kind of got bullied out of that as she was pregnant when the twins came. And that's when I kind of put the sticks down, which, you know, is is unfortunate. But I understand how, I mean, it's just, you know, it, that's your opinion. You know it's what I mean? Opinion, and I'm, not, yeah. I'm, I'm definitely not even mad at your opinion, but I see on the flip side where I can see like, some people being a certain age, like, bro, all you do is play video games now. If you're not getting paid for it, that's kind of weird. But I'm, like I said, I'm not even mad at you. But then again, I used to love in my teens and early 20s, I couldn't get off the stick. So I, I get, and like you said, you're a gamer yourself. So you understand, you know, the excitement. But like I said, I remember some of my fondest memories, you know, when I was first in the league was, you know, kicking back, smoking and playing Madden for bread all day, every day. <laughs> right. Well, you're also playing for money. Mm -hmm. and, and what I said was, okay, if you're a... Uh you know, an esports guy, or if you're a, a streamer, or if you have a big YouTube channel and you're supporting yourself with this, yeah. I'm 100% for it. Mm -hmm. Like I support the hustle. You manage to quit your job and play video games all day mm -hmm. and, and pay for your apartment and your food. Keep doing that shit. Right. But if you're like most people who work eight hours a day, come home and play for six or seven hours, go to sleep, wake up in the morning, get a few games in before they go to work, and then repeat and repeat yeah, that and might repeat. Be, that, that might be like some sort of, sort of addiction. You know well, what yeah, I mean? and a lot of people said, oh, I don't get depressed from video games. I'm already depressed and video games help with my depression. And it's like, yeah, see, you're kind of proving my point yeah, because you're not dealing with the, the source yeah. of your depression. You're just escaping yeah. from it for a couple yeah. of hours. I mean, you can go down a rabbit hole with this whole conversation, but I just feel like, you know, like with the situation you just explained where you work, you know, you a uh, regular person, you know, nine to five and you work all day and then you come home and game till you go to sleep. I just feel like there's better things you'd be doing with your time to, to try to get yourself in a better spot. But like I said, every to each his own. You know what I mean? Sometimes the video games is life to people. And it's crazy because these e-gamers are getting paid as much as athletes now. So it's just like... Right. It's, and that it's, part it's is a, cool. Yeah. And I, I support that part. Yeah. But listen, you probably know guys like this. I know guys like this. They go on vacation with their girlfriends or their wives and they bring their PS5 with them. Never. My 13 year olds do that. My 13 year olds take their PS everywhere. I'm no, nah, I'm only Wait, but you know I'm what ready. I mean? But adult yeah, man nah. doing that. They're going, you're going to the Bahamas with nah, your girl. Nah, that ain't it, bro. You ain't, all you should be doing is bringing us some weed outside of that. Right. It's time to. But you but know, you know guys like this. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? Yeah, and it's I just mean, like, yo, what the fuck are you doing? Yeah. And when I brought that up, dudes are like, oh, you let your girl control your life, don't you? <laughs> and I'm like, I can't, I can't uh, win. I can't win this no. conversation. Someone's going to no, come. No, but, but video games are life to people. So I get how hard they're fighting for that shit. It's just, like I said, because it used to be my life, but now I like, I don't, I can kill. I would never, I don't ever play video games now, which is unfortunate. But like I said, it's it, it's life to some people. So I can see some people probably want try gave you death threats over the shit you said. Probably. I got death threats. Yes. I believe it. I got to kill yourself. <laughs> right. I'm, you're going to yeah. die. I All hate right. you. Yeah, no, I, I mean, I get it. Yeah. I mean, listen, <laughs> Kevin Durant, crazy. you know, Kevin, Kevin follows me on Instagram. And he chimes in sometimes. And, and he was like, you know, for me, he's like, I don't think, I actually think it helps with mental health. He goes, something to do with the homies. Uh, Ocho Cinco chimed in. He was like, well, for me, some of my greatest moments are video games. You just have to be really good at it. You know what I mean? You have to reach a certain level. That's how you can really appreciate it. And I get it. These guys are also not missing practice or missing important business meetings because they're playing video games. Right. They're, they're all multimillionaires. Mm -hmm. And they could do that in their spare time. But for the, the majority of people who really get sucked into this, and, and I have, and I've gone through bouts of depression where I'm just like, yo, I just want to play fucking 10 hours of video games. I don't want to deal with life right now. Mm -hmm. And you know, you get off that, you realize you've done nothing for the past 10 hours. You've learned nothing. You've gained nothing. You're, you're isolating yourself away from human interaction. <laughs> Even though you could say, oh, online, I'm talking to people. Eh, not really. It's not like actually being... See, I can understand being with your friends and hanging right. out and talking shit right. and punching each other, right. you know, and betting and yeah, so yeah, forth. Yeah, yeah. That is a party with the video game being the backdrop okay. of it. But what I'm talking about when you're by yourself, yeah. isolated. Yeah, no, I get what you're saying. I definitely yeah. get what you're saying. But like I said, there's just as many people that are going to argue with like, fuck you, Vlad, you don't know what you're talking about. Right. Well, well yeah, it. 24 million people argue with me. <laughs> <All right. laughs> but, right. but lots of people actually DM me who were scared to get bullied and said, yo, man, you're absolutely right. You yeah. know, and they start bringing, oh, I was yeah. 350 pounds and I yeah. was, you know. Oh, no, there's the, you're definitely not, not wrong. Like there's just yeah. some people that don't see it your way. Yeah. And that's cool. <laughs> I could deal with that's that. That's the world we live in. <laughs> um, Kyrie Irving. Mm. 
you made some comments about him in the past. Yeah. He he's a man. Just I, I scratch my head because there's so much talent. Mm -hmm. There's so much talent there. Yeah. And yet he makes decisions that ultimately keep him from achieving the greatness that I feel that he has. He's an incredible. He's incredible. He played 16 games, the Brooklyn Nets. And what happened when they played Boston? Yeah, man, Kyrie is 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 a wild card. And, and I'm someone who doesn't necessarily like to speak on guys like that, uh, that I don't really know because I don't know Kyrie. I just got a chance to play against them. And, you know, from being a former player now and, and being in the media, it's undeniable that he's one of the most five talented players in the world. Mm. And the only angle I've come from is it's although basketball promotes individuality and you, and you can eat and there's all kinds of stuff to do with individual. It's a team sport at the end of the day. You know what I mean? So my whole thing with Kyrie was, you know, you got Kevin Durant to, to leave Golden State. I'm not sure. I'm not saying Kyrie was the only reason, but you got him for him to come join you mm -hmm. in Brooklyn. Um, you know, you ultimately end up getting James too. And for, you know, to, to, and again, the, the vaccination is a whole nother rabbit hole we can go down. Like, I, if you got it, respect it. If you didn't get it, I respect it. Right. But to each his own mm -hmm. on that. But to me, it's just like you never gave the basketball side a real chance. And I think that's, a, you know, that's the only, I'm not speaking on no personal life side of it. Like, I, I just think he hasn't given the basketball side a real chance. Because if you think about it, him and Kevin Durant, healthy, happy, and ready, ready to play, that's a hard team to beat. Well, and James Harden. And James Harden. Like that was supposed to be the new dynasty, right? Yeah, that was the you know the big you was know, scary, three you know what I mean? Major the, the, guys. The what ifs. A, yeah, the what ifs with that team, I, I think are off the charts and people always wonder. You know what I mean? But like I said, I just again I respect everyone's personal decisions on 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 how you, you know, vaccinate or not vaccinate. It's none of my business. But again, I just I'm talking from a, a fan side and a, and a and a former player side where you know, you have arguably, a, when it's all said and done, a top 10 player ever to play this game and Kevin Durant coming to play with you in Brooklyn with a chance to win a championship. Um, and I feel like it's just kind of squandering away. And that's just like, damn, like he, he may look back when he's all said and done, like, damn, what if I would have just played? You know, what could have happened? What, 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 how much could we have won? Well, with all that said, all he has to do is come out this year and kill, like I know he's gonna do, and he's gonna. This will all blow over, and he's gonna get the money he deserves because he deserves a max. However much the max is, he deserves it and more. But like I said, they don't trust him enough right now to give him that, so they want to almost. And which is crazy to think some of his caliber and his talent, you have to prove yourself again. But it's not that he has to prove his game; he just has to prove that he's gonna be out there for the team. Well, yeah, I mean, can you imagine Kobe sitting out half the season because he doesn't want to get vaccinated, or Jordan? No, you know, Neither <laughs> messing up the finals because no. he's beefing over over a, a medical thing. No, but actually, but I mean, but it's hard to say because neither of these guys had to go through that time. But I wouldn't if I had to bet. Right. I mean, you know, Kobe, you you knew Kobe personally. Kobe Can played. you Co no. even imagine something? Absolutely not. Yo, know, this man no reason. tore his Achilles shot a free throw. And, and, and shot a free throw. Yeah. Like, yo, who? You're not going to tell me that Kobe's not going to get a shot yeah. in his arm and mess up the whole season. I mean, season. he was traveling back and forth, you know, through that trial and still playing. You know right. what I mean? Like, Kobe right. is going to be on the court when Kobe could be on the court. So, but again, I would never want to compare situations because they're different. My whole thing is just like, you know, when I'm looking at the basketball side of it, it's just like, it's tough for me to just see as a fan of the game and a fan of his game. It's just like, man, like we, we have a, a small sliver of our life to be on this stage and win and accumulate as much money as possible. And I just feel like, you know, sometimes he, 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 it's more about him than the team, which I get. Yeah, I think the problem is is that if he just said, "Look, listen, I'm not getting vaccinated. That's just my opinion. I'm done with it." But he doubles down. Uh, he said the vaccine mandates are amongst the biggest violations of human rights history. He retweeted Alex Jones, which basically had Alex Jones saying that the government is trying to become God when it comes to your health, and then by releasing diseases and viruses and plagues upon us, then basically we get shoved in their system. 
He just believes in this weird secret society conspiracy. Everyone's against him. Yeah, the government might, is... I'm going to keep it real. He might not be wrong. <laughs> I don't really know. But like there's shit that, that is shown to us that makes you want to believe that kind of stuff. And I'm not, okay. like I said, I'm not personal opinions and, and the way you view the world and you think it's flat or not. Like I'm not. Right. He like, thought about, is, yeah, he was doing the flat yeah. earth thing. At one so point. I'm not like to me, I don't. None of that shit matters to me. You know what I mean? I just know that Kyrie Irving is one of the most talented players in the world. You yeah. got Kevin Durant, who's going to be a top 10 player of all time on your team. Like, I want to see you guys go out there and work. And then whatever the fuck else you do is up to you, bro. I mean, how ironic is it that uh, Kyrie leaves the Celtics, Kevin Durant leaves the Warriors, and then who makes it to the finals? Both them teams. It's tough. Imagine watching that. The Both of them watching this on TV going like, hmm. I wonder if this was the best the best decision as we're seeing that these teams got there without them. Right. No, it's, it's, Imagine how they would have done with them. Yeah, no, it would have been scary. It would have been scary. Like I said, that Golden State team was was a machine. You know, that Boston team had some 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 issues, but that Golden State team was a machine. Like who knows? Like to me, you put that up there with when Shaq left the Lakers, how many of Shaq and Kobe would have won? Like with, with Kevin Durant leaving Golden State, you're always gonna wonder, like, who knows how much that fucking team would have won because they were so good. Oh, yeah. No, Steph Curry even talked about this summer there was a serious discussion about bringing Kevin Durant back to the Warriors. They would have had to give up a lot. They would have had to mortgage their future to <laughs> yeah. do that. But to me, I'm I'm from a point of, and this is just me as the basketball mind, Steph Curry is a, a generational talent. So I'm going to be all in the entire time Steph Curry is playing basketball for my organization. So that's why I didn't even think, well, I would never trade all these young players for KD. I'm riding the wheels till they fall off of Steph Curry. You know what I mean? So if that means bringing Kevin Durant back and having to get rid of Poole and, and, and Wiseman and some of these young people who are going to be the future, I would seriously consider that. Yeah, I mean, I feel like Steph Curry wasn't in the conversation of the GOATs. But after this, you know, finals win again, I just feel it's undeniable. Like, you have to put him in that conversation. You have to mention him along with Jordan and Kobe mm. and LeBron. I'm not mad at that. Yeah, you no, see what no, I'm saying? I, agree. I mean, you, the problem is he's a little bit shorter than these guys. Yeah, you don't, and that's you don't, what counts you don't against get him. The 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 the, the it, it, Steph has a different kind of dominance, if that makes sense. Like yes. you felt Kobe and MJ and Shaq's dominance because they were, you know, although Shaq's a monster, you know, Kobe and MJ are six 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 seven, like yeah. big, strong guys. But Steph is just the, the 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 new generation type dominance where it's you know it's the athleticism it's the uh, it, excuse me it's the quickness it's the speed it's the skill set um but yeah you know there's an argument of who the greatest you know I'm a magic Jam Magic Johnson is you know mm -hmm. point god so to speak you know with all due respect to Chris Paul you know what I mean and there's you know there's definitely a discussion now where you know people could could say or want to say that Steph could be or is going to be the greatest point guard of all time but you know, that's a discussion above my pay grade, but I definitely think he's in the top 10. And when it's all said and done, he will be remembered as one of the greatest basketball players and could have had the biggest change in the game. You know, like. Yeah, I mean, Mon Shumpert said that. He said when, you know, when he was with Cleveland with LeBron and they were playing the Warriors, he hated the Warriors. He absolutely despised them because they changed the game. Completely. Like. After, you know, Steph and, and the Warriors really... But, but from grassroots, though. Like, yeah. it's like, because I coach my kids and I've been coaching my kids. Like, he changed basketball, not just the NBA. He changed the face and the way basketball is played. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? His ability, because you used to live by the three, die by the three. And every team was dying by the three. When I first came to the league, people didn't really shoot threes like that. You know what I mean? It had to go inside out. The big had to touch it and then had to move around and you can take three. You know, now the, the best look is, you know, if you're open, shoot that motherfucker. And that was not the thinking in the game. You yeah. know what I mean? So to me, the game is, is, is a glorified pickup game, but I love it. You know what I mean? Like to me, I'm not one of those guys that, oh, they don't do this. They don't like, I love and appreciate the game. It's still a beautiful game and people are very skilled out here, but Steph and Clay have been two guys that, that, that kind of just changed the thinking you know, they thought outside the box with their ability to shoot the three. And, and the fact that they're able to win is the reason why they've kind of changed the game. Right. And the word is, is that Steph Curry is supposed to sign a $1 billion Ooh, lifetime deal with I Under it. Armour. I love it. I'm, I mean, I'm not the biggest Under Armour fan. I can't tell you that I have anything Under Armour. I, I don't in, either, in my, man. I house. actually bought a pair of the Currys. I uh, wore them. I said, nah, I'm good. Uh, love, no offense. Love, no offense huge, to Steph. But huge, it was like, huge ah. fan of Steph. Love Steph. Love his family. <laughs> uh, Under Armour. But like I said, at the end of the day, man, you're, you're talking about a billion-dollar deal. You know what I mean? Like how many guys, you know, him and Braun, 
right? Night or shoe deals that were, you know, uh, in that range. Obviously, Jordan got himself there. Mm-hmm. Um, but, you know, that, that's just the business of basketball and, 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 and speaks to his greatness. You know what I mean? He took a chance on a shoe that, that was very unpopular and still not very popular. But at the same time, he's going to be able to take care of his family's family's family, you know, off, off the, the stuff he's doing right now. Oh, yeah. I, mean, I remember reading about the story about how originally he was supposed to sign a Nike. And when he showed up to the meeting, the slideshow they showed him had Kevin Durant's name on it. Like they didn't even uh, bother to even the customize dis- the disrespect, huh? The slideshow. And, and, like uh, I think him and his dad were like involved, and they kind of looked at each other, and go, "Now nah, we're good. Let's go somewhere else." That's a that's a. I mean, but, you know, Nike is that machine. You know what I mean? So it's just like you miss on someone, you'll be able to grab someone else. You know. But yeah, that's I, I never heard that story. But if that's true, that's nuts. But yeah, I mean, uh, can you imagine what Steph's shoe would do as a Nike? It would be. Incredible. Oh, it would be crazy. Incredible. But, it would be crazy, but they probably wouldn't offer him a billion dollars. No, no, he would have been thrown in the. He would have been thrown in the in the machine. You know, he yeah. would have got good money, but he would have got a Kevin Durant deal. Yeah, he would. He wouldn't have got that. He wouldn't have got that B. Yeah, yeah, man. I I hope it's true. Yeah, I'm not I, mad at I, it. I hope I hope it's true. Absolutely. <laughs> well, uh, you know, you talked about Chris Paul. Uh, Pat Bev made some <laughs> comments about him. <laughs> Called him a parking cone. Yeah. And you actually criticized that. Yeah, I just Pat for that. I mean, and I like Pat Bev. I mean, to me, he, he, me and him is cut from the same cloth, same style. People hate to play against us. Love to have us on our team. You know, we may bounce around a little bit, but we always end up starting. Come, you know, first guys off the bench. You know, kind of heartbeats. You know, you need guys like us to win at the end of the day. Like we're not the stars, but we help the you know we help the machine go. And I just didn't like how he brought personal beef that I guess came from high school or some shit where he went to a CP3 <laughs> camp and, and, and put that all over the TV. You I mean, I think media's got out of hand and out of pocket these days. And they think, you know, the louder and the louder you yell and the, the wilder shit you say is, 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 is the new norm. And I hate it. You know what I mean? I think it's, I think it's crazy. I think we've gone away from the art of actually letting the fans know what's really going on and we're putting our personal dislikes and touches all over it. And, and, and to me, it's tough because in the media, you have to critique. And, you know, I can feel like I can critique without being disrespectful. You know what I mean? So I just felt he was out of line and disrespectful. And, you know, since no one was going to tell him that, I felt like I took the time on air to tell him that. Um, some of what I told him on air or off air. But you see kind of it, it there was almost a reward system because you saw him on TV on ESPN the next like seven days in a row. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? So like these these networks like that kind of drama and controversy. Well, yeah, I mean, it's media because look, I'm sure when you were playing for your eight teams, there was some stuff that the media said about you that got under your, you know, yeah. under your skin. Mm-hmm. And some of them were probably former basketball players and so forth. No, not necessarily. It was never really from the former player. I mean, it probably, but my to me, what, what makes me mad is, or not makes me mad, but what like makes me think like the audacity is, like if you never laced them up and, and, and been in the league, not that you can't talk about it because there's plenty of people that are educated on the game enough to talk about it, but like when it comes to the disrespect, that's the crazy part. You know, there's... The NBA, to make it the NBA, there's only been 5,000 NBA players in the history of the game. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like, everybody in the world wants to play on the NBA. So if you're the a starter, a bench guy, the last guy on the bench, like, you're one of those one percenters to ever play, you know, in the league. So I just don't like when people who haven't played the game think they can really just go out here and disrespect the players like it's easy. And that's not just across basketball. That's, you know, football, baseball, across, across all. I just want people to have more of appreciation for the people that have actually made it. You know what I mean? So... My thing, I feel like as players, man, we have responsibility. Like we were once in those locker rooms. So for me to, you know, you're not going to catch me talking crazy about dudes because I was in, I was, I was the guys that used to have to listen to, you know, people talk crazy about me. So, but like I said, it's kind of a double-edged sword because you see people moving up in the space when they talk crazy and, and, and make hot takes that, that go viral that necessarily aren't fact-based, but, you know, more emotion and opinion-based, but it, it's, it's the controversy that sells. Yeah, I mean, look, at one point, Skip Bayless called Russell Westbrook Westbrick. And at one point, Westbrook responded, was like, you know, you say it to my face. And Skip Bayless was like, yeah, I'll say it to your face. Come to my show. Yeah, I'll say it right to your face. All right. We could talk about it. And look, I, I understand what you're saying. But there's also, you know, I remember... You know, Tony Ayo was a regular on my show. Mm-hmm. He always talks about how when he first signed a 50 cent, 50 cent down and said, okay, from here on in, you're a public property. You're a public figure. You're an artist. You're on a label, whatever. You can't take shit personally. 
Me and Yale have had problems over some mm -hmm. stuff I posted, and we've gotten mm -hmm. over it. But at the end of the day, when you put yourself out there as a public figure, you open yourself up to criticism from the whole world. I get that. Right? Get that. And, and look, you could go back to being a private citizen. No one will ever talk about mm -hmm. you again. But you're choosing to put yourself in a field of entertainment. Comes with the territory. And sports is entertainment. I know some people feel, oh, no, it's different. It's No, it's no. entertainment just like watching a Netflix show is entertainment. It's just no, it, it comes with the it comes, it comes with the money, you know. What and, mean? And, like, it comes, and you get the check to yeah. go along with it. So some people, you know, some people have a different take. You know, mm -hmm. I'm gonna speak up for myself. You know, like you see people like Kevin Durant speak, and I'm not mad for guys because, like I said, yeah. when people are like, well, why does KD care? I'm just like, have you ever had the whole world calling you something or or, or 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 talking shit to you? Do you know how you would really react if you were in Kevin Durant's shoes? Like you don't. You know what I mean? So I'm not mad at people who stand up for themselves. But like I said, it, it, to me, it's a losing battle because there's going to be the, there's we're living a world with just so much negativity now. People just continue to pile and pile it on it. But you just have to be careful, you know, because, you know, Skip Bayless, you know, you could run across Russ in public and get slapped. <laughs> right. You know what I mean? It could in, happen. In real life. It, in real it, it life. could happen. And I'm sure he's mm -hmm. aware of that. Yeah. So, I mean, that's a chance you take, you know, mm -hmm. for, 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 for being someone who, who talks. You know, reckless like that, you know, but for the most part, you hope that it just kind of stays there. But like I said, I just think there's just so much you can critique me. You can talk bad about my, but just when you disrespect the man, when you disrespect the person, like to me, that's when I I think it's going too far. But, you know, it is what it is. Hopefully, you know, like I said, Draymond Green speaks on this new media. Mm -hmm. You know I mean about, you know, if you know the game enough, you're going to have enough to talk about without saying the wild shit you know what i mean you can say real shit so i mean it's just you know hopefully there's you know a wave of enough of us to that, that that you know can kind of steer that shit but it is what it is i mean you played for the lakers before when you see lebron's lakers not make it to the playoffs <laughs> which kind of shocked everybody were you surprised i was surprised but i didn't ban blame lebron i just to me, it's it's a bigger picture. You know, what I mean, you have moving pieces, and I think people underestimate how important chemistry is in basketball. And then another, you know, when he's healthy and and, and out there really hooping, Anthony Davis is a top five player mm -hmm. in the world. You know what I mean? Yeah. So when you add new pieces, you you take away a superstar in Anthony Davis, and you have an aging, arguably one of the greatest to ever do it. It's a, it's a recipe for disaster. You know what I mean? Well, and then Westbrook comes in with a massive contract and he's expected to really perform mm -hmm. to earn that money. And a lot of people say he didn't really live up to the expectations considering how much he was being paid. It's it, it's a difficult situation, you know, when you look at the Lakers because Russ is a Russ and LeBron's games aren't the same, but they are the same from a standpoint of they need the ball in their hands to be their best. And I think what LeBron showed or what LeBron's been showing the past few years, which I love, is his ability to still affect the game without dominating the ball. And when he dominates the ball, I mean, he's top 10 in assists, whatever. He, he can't do no wrong on the court, <laughs> you know, barely. You know, he can't really can't do no wrong. But LeBron showed me that, you know, he can post up now and control the game from the post. He can run the pinch post. He can be a screener. He could be a roller. There's so many different things I feel like LeBron James can do because he's so great. I think in order for this Laker team to work, and this is just my opinion, I could be way fucking off. I think LeBron has to allow Russ to be Russ more allow Russ to really get in the flow and have the ball in his hands and LeBron kind of pick and choose his spots more with the whole team knowing that fourth quarter comes, it's my ball and I'm still going to get everyone involved, but I'm going to be in charge. But I think, you know, what their their strategy was to have Russ off the ball, but then have him in the corner with no rhythm. That's never been Russ's game. You know what I mean? So I think this year it's along with Anthony Davis being healthy, it's going to be, I think LeBron is going to be the one that normally you have to, when you go play with a great player, you have to kind of tone your game down for his greatness. But I think LeBron is so great that he can almost take a step back and allow Russ to control the ball more to really get in his rhythm and his bag. So by the time Bron has in the fourth quarter, Russ is in rhythm and he can really go. But I'm, I'm under the believing that great players figure it out. So it'll be interesting to see, like I said, with health and time together, I, I think the Lakers can figure it out. I'm not saying they're going to win a championship, but I definitely think they'll be a competitive team. Well, yeah, I mean, Iman Shepard said kind of the same thing. He's a regular on my show as well. And he said that, you know, Russell Westbrook got $44 million, but didn't get $44 million of ball time. I mean, when you get $44 million, though, like then is the coach, that much, then the coach got to give, then the coach gotta give me $44 million ball in my hand time. <laughs> and he didn't get that. At all. Okay, fair enough. At all. I'm just saying, I'm not his agent. <laughs> hmm. Yeah, I mean, that's like I said, if you know the game, you know Russ has had the ball in his hands since college, you know, mm -hmm. and, and, to, and to take it out of his hands and tell him to do 
go stand in the corner like a corner shooter. That's not his strength. So to me, that's not smart coaching. You know what I mean? To me, you got to put him in situations to succeed. But he's just such a competitor. Um, you know, and then playing for the Lakers, I'd be telling motherfuckers, is playing for the Lakers is like no other team. Like when you come to LA, you're su- when you come to the Lakers, you were under the magnifying glass. He's from LA. He's a UCLA kid, LA boy. So the magnifying glass is going to be on him. And then the, fa- the the type of money he's making, but he deserves that money. I mean, Russ is going to be going down as one of the greatest players of all time. You know, you how quickly people forget how dominant he was for such a long time. So. I just think the pieces didn't necessarily fit, but I think with health and time and minutes together, they can make them work. Well, it seems like right after we did our last interview three years ago, you launched All the Smoke yeah, on Showtime mm-hmm. with Steven Jackson. Mm-hmm. How's that show coming along? Man, that's just been a, a blessing in disguise. <laughs> Um, you know, me and Jack were both doing media post career and, you know, kind of getting good feedback. We love your realness. We love your authenticity, this, this and that. And, you know, Jack is my brother. And we were in my house in the Bay one time just smoking. And I'm just like, yo, let's 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 try to let's do something together. It's like, what do we do? I'm just like, let's do a podcast. He's like, what's the podcast? I was like, I don't know, but I know we can cuss and I know we can smoke and drink. Like, cause, you know, we were, <laughs> I was working for ESPN. He was at Fox and there's a straight line you have to work. I was like, we could be us. I mean, we could talk how we want to talk and we could smoke and we could drink and just have a good time. So I came up with this idea of just kind of being in a man cave with the homies, whether there's cameras there or not. You're smoking, you're drinking, you're watching the game and just that kind of conversation amongst, you know, athletes and musicians and 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 and, and, and uh, entertainers would be interesting. So I pitched the idea through a friend of mine c- connecting to somebody at Showtime. I pitched the idea and we found lightning in the bottle. You know, I mean, we came out our first year and won Sports Podcast of the Year. Um, had some amazing guests. Did Kobe's last interview. Oh, you guys did just, Kobe's last interview? Yeah. I didn't know that. And okay. like I said, we just, we, we, we found something special. And um, I think it's because we've created an environment where people feel safe and comfortable. You know, we're not trying to get no clickbait or we don't, you know, we're not trying to go viral for the wrong reason. We want to just give people the other side of some of their favorite people. Like I got a chance to know a lot of different people. On in their profession, but have been blessed to see them outside of that. And that's what I always wanted to bring to the table is, you know, show people the other side of Kobe that, you know, you know, show them Kobe, not the Mamba. You know, the world gets to see the Mamba. Very few people get to see Kobe. And that's the kind of approach I brought, you know, when I interview him or, or you know, same thing with KD. You know, KD gets a tough rap, I think, period. Show who what he's like off the court, who he really is, how he thinks, you know what I mean? And that's, that's always been my whole goal um, from that show. And I think we've done a pretty good job of that. You know, since our last interview, Kobe passed away. Yeah, man. I think maybe a few months later. Where I live, in, at the t- where I was living at the time in Calabasas was like down the street mm-hmm. in the crash site. So I remember it was like, oh shit, let's walk down and hang out with some of the, the Kobe fans and sort of just yeah. kind of experience this really sad moment. But I never, I never knew him as someone that actually knew him. Yeah. How did you hear that news? It hurt, man. You, you never think... <laughs> superheroes die you know what i mean and kobe yeah. is a superhero to a lot of people um i was in a, i was up north i was i took my kids au team to the bay to play in a tournament and it was championship sunday and when it happened um and i heard the news and just froze and like i just it didn't seem real i mean it's, it's almost coming up on three years now it, it, and it still doesn't seem real um you know, getting a chance, like, people thought, you know, Kobe and I didn't like each other. I didn't like Kobe, but people didn't know, like, that ball fake in Orlando, like, changed everything. You know what I mean? Like, he called me personally to come be on the Lakers, and we went from, you know, competitors to teammates to brothers. You know what I mean? He literally sent my kids and, and their team a pair of shoes, like, two weeks before he passed. His latest, he remodeled one of his shoes and sent them to the twins team and everyone was excited and you know what I mean like we really grew as brothers you know he used to call me the night before tournaments because he coached Gigi and everything is out in Orange County where he lived he's like you know what time the boys play you know sometimes we'd play at nine they wouldn't play till 11 Cope would come up two hours early to watch some nine-year-olds play you really? know what I mean like and then we would you know as soon as we got done with our game we'd go watch him and Gigi you know what I mean so it's just like we really grew you know a brotherhood through fatherhood and um you know just to see 
how great he was off the court. Just such a different person, but still like a. When we went and did his last interview, he was just telling us about all the shit he was doing, and 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 the, 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 about to start writing another book, and and his 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 fund, and his his he had won an uh, Oscar, and he was just doing so much great shit. I'm just like, damn, but he's just great at everything, huh? I mean, he just finished <laughs> a legendary career, and now you're in the business world, and you're absolutely doing whatever you want to, and 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 and, and continuing to raise the bar. And just to see him go like that, and then to find out Gigi was on the pl- uh, helicopter, and other little girls and parents were on the oh, helicopter. Yeah, that that was, was to me the worst part. That was honestly the worst part because these kids didn't even get to live their lives wow. yet. Little wow. kids, man. And Gigi was, I mean, obviously a, a beautiful little soul, but like she could really hoop. Like she was, you know, like I used to fuck with Kobe all the time because you know he would he had the girls, and I had the twins, and then. He had. He was gonna have another little girl. Then I had another little boy. And I remember when his last daughter came. I'm like, damn, bro, another girl. And I remember he put in capital letters like, God has a sick, sen- a sick sense of humor. Like we just used to <laughs> fuck with each other all off that. But you know, we talked about once Gigi fell in love with basketball, how it got him back in love with basketball. And hmm. you know, that got him. He's like, bro, we didn't have, we didn't have the the NBA package in my house. We didn't watch basketball. You know, Gigi made me get it on the phone, and then I started watching it again, and I started taking her to games. And he said he started falling in love with it again from her perspective. You know, watching her light, her eyes light up when they would go to games, and people would recognize and talk to her, and then seeing how good she was getting on the court. And she gives me chills just talk about. Um, but just to see the the new life she put into him. You know, as far as you know, kind of sparking that fire of basketball back in him and then to to see the discipline he had as a guy he had these little girls practicing like five or six days a week like he's like matt i'm not bullshit he's like these girls are running these girls ran the triangle like phil had our laker team running the triangle like these kids ran the triangle to a t his attention to discipline his detail i remember i took my kids out there for a little surprise birthday party when they were 10 he had one of the twins crying it was just like kobe is when it comes to basketball kobe's kobe and it's just a beautiful thing no i mean my only interaction with Kobe, unfortunately, unfortunately, he had done this post about showing this team of girls and how they had lost. And he kind of made sort of a oh, bit of a sideways. and killed them the next year, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But like we reposted it and he like responded to me and was like, no, that's not what I meant. And, and <laughs> <laughs> right. Unfortunately, I mean, but it was right. like, well, look at the post. Like mm-hmm. I understand that. You are the Mamba, and this is your mentality. But you're talking about little kids. At the, you're mm. talking about little girls. So mm. this, to me, it was not exactly the right approach when it comes to kids. Mm-hmm. But then again, it's Kobe, it's so he's different. gonna he's gonna do nah, what you're talking he about. Has that he has? I remember this one time we <laughs> had this camp up in Santa Barbara, and I was coming off a of knee surgery my first year with the Lakers, I think. So I wasn't even really moving. I came back the end of the season. This is the year Dallas won. They swept us in the first round. So he invites me to come up to his camp in Santa Barbara and, and hang out and talk to the kids. And we played these, like, I think we played two on two or three on three. And it was me and Cove against these two kids. And when I tell you he was game seven, blocking shots, dunking, wait, made one of the kids fall. I'm like, bro, these are fucking kids. What are you doing? I don't give a fuck. Like he did not, like when he put that ball in his hands, he was a monster. Kid, child, baby. Kobe's not giving you that. So like I said, I think it was obviously softened. Um, from having a daughter, you know, uh, how daughters can soften you up. But just from a standpoint of just detail, like we're going to get this shit down. And and, and Gigi loved it, which was crazy. You know what I mean? So like she, you know, she had that in her in her, too. So it was just such a beautiful thing to see him sit back and kind of like feel what he would whistle everyone. Not he didn't really say much. He would whistle sometimes and get the girls attention. But these girls ran the triangle offense like they were the Lakers. It was beautiful. Yeah, no, I mean, Nick was here yesterday. And he was talking about how this one time they were doing bad and a bunch of the players were playing, you know, wearing Kobe's shoes. He made, he made everyone take, them take the shoes yeah, off with that. and threw them in the garbage. So y'all don't deserve to wear my shoes. He made everyone take off their shoes <laughs> in the locker room. Take off his shoes. Yeah, his shoes. Yeah, yeah, he wasn't playing. He was getting blew out by Portland. Yeah. And he wasn't playing right. He was like, you're not playing Y'all oh, take off my shoes. Y'all don't, y'all not. <laughs> y'all don't deserve these. Y'all don't deserve to wear these. Y'all don't deserve to wear these. <laughs> so he took everybody's shoes individually and threw them in the trash. Like, it was crazy. So Yeah. This not, is Kobe. Like, this is a different type of human the, the, the that we're res- dealing the with. The respect for Kobe is different because, you know, in a day and age, and to all due respect to everyone, Kobe rode that Lakers ship till it sank. 
I mean, he could have definitely jumped off, you know, once the heyday was done and went and tried to hunt another ring. His biggest thing to me, it's like, I want to be able to sit at the table with MJ. You know, he want, I want six rings. That was his biggest thing. He wanted to be the greatest and he wanted to get six rings. So he could have jumped ship once the Lakers started sinking and, and, and went and found a team and, and, and won a championship and got it that way. But Kobe didn't let it happen. So he went through some bad years with young teams, young teammates that, you know, that, laugh at everything and Kobe doesn't when you lose it's it's not sweet around him you know what I mean yeah. so guys are laughing and still living their lives which you got to do sometimes but when you're losing around Kobe it's ugly I mean do you hear the story about um him and Michael Jordan about what when they played each other mm -mm. so uh I think Gilbert Arenas told the story so what happened was remember Kobe went straight from high school into the NBA mm -hmm. and from what I understand the reason was so he could play Jordan Okay. So there wouldn't be the, oh, well, you can't be the greatest because you and Jordan never played each other. So he went straight to the NBA so he could actually play Jordan. Mm -hmm. And I guess the first time they played, he was wearing Jordan sneakers. He was wearing some retros or something. And like at the end of the game, uh, I think this is when Jordan was with the Wizards. Oh, you could wear them, but you can't fill them? You see, yeah, you, yeah, you can wear my shoes, but you can't fill them. He like Kobe, smacked him in the ass Kobe or something. busted his ass next time they came to he, LA. He said for the next two weeks, Kobe would not speak to anybody. He would show up to practice, <laughs> and the, the teammates were like, "Yo, what, what do we do?" And it's like, "No, it's it's, it's, it's the Jordan. It's thing. Just just let it go." And when they played again, he just went off. Just gave like it was like forty points, like the meanest forty points ever, and, and just demolished Jordan. Kobe was a sicko when it came to you know. Yeah, he was like a psychopath. Being, yeah, is the way that like, I think yeah, Gilbert and you, would describe. Yeah, and, you, and you had to be, you know, his work ethic and his his his, you know, his his goal to be the greatest ever was, you know, I'd never seen, I never got a chance to play MJ. So to me, Kobe was him. You know what yeah. I mean? But to just to get a chance to know him and play against him and work out with him and see the the, the time and effort and preparation he puts into it, it's just like damn. I don't got that kind of dedication, but you're a bad motherfucker, bro. <laughs> <laughs> well, since last time you actually got a Kobe and Gigi yeah, tattoo. Yeah, man, I got a Can we, uh, zoom tattoo on that? Kobe and Gigi at the All-Star game when she hugged him. Um, it was, like I said, it's just, it, it, it doesn't seem real. And, you know, then to know his sister, Shea, and then and, and be cool with Vanessa. And know his mom and dad, and it's... <sighs> No, GG. It's just it's 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 hard to swallow, man. And I my heart goes out to everyone in the situation, um, from Vanessa and the girls to his mom and dad and his sister. It's just it's it, it it's it's unexpected. It's 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 scary, and it, it it seems like you know nit pass, and then the following year cope pass, and shit's just been going downhill ever since. You know, after that the pandemic hits, and it's just mm -hmm. like it was just a bad wave of things that continued to happen. But man, we definitely miss miss him. I mean, how do you feel, you know, you know, Vanessa, you know, her suing, uh, you know, the Los Angeles Sheriff's Department over the pictures. She's suing the helicopter company. Um, you know, she also kicked her mom out. Seems like there's a lot of things that she's dealing with to the best of her ability while dealing with the trauma of losing her everything, essentially. Have you yeah. guys talked at all? Yeah, we, you know, Vanessa and I talk. Um you know, here and there. Sometimes it's serious, sometimes it's not. Sometimes I'm just checking in. Um, but it's a lot. I mean, you you know, to lose your husband, but then to lose your daughter too. Yeah. You know what I mean? So it's just, I can never speak to her pain. Um, not only her pain, but the mom and dad's pain, the sister's pain, everyone involved pain. It's just, it's just a level. And then to think, not only do I lose these people, but now people are, are, are talking about, you know, my husband and showing picture piece where my husband and my daughter's dead bodies. You know what I mean? It's just like, what kind of fucking people do stuff like that? And it's, I'm, I'm glad she won. I wish she would have got more. Um, but it just shows that, that, that until it happens to yours, people really don't have too much compassion for people anymore. Uh, you know, and it's a, it's a sad thing. Well, uh, right after the pandemic started, the whole George Floyd situation happened. Mm -hmm. And Steven Jackson, your co-host, was actually good friends yeah. with Floyd. Yeah. They call themselves like twin because they actually look similar. They're not actually related, are they? No. But they just look yeah. similar. And he knows, you know, he knows the family and everything else like that. When when that started to go down, being that you're so close to, to Steven Jackson, what was really happening in his mind and in your mind? And <sighs> 
it was it was I, I think for the first time the world got a chance to see this is you know people always say well why do you guys always bring races race into this and and, and hate into this and I'm just like we don't bring it in a tear you know what I mean I think the world got to see you know what we've been screaming for the past hundred four hundred years you know what I mean there's just certain people that that have hate in their heart and 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 what that cop did to George Floyd for the world to see was disgusting but at the same time there were people arguing on behalf of the cop trying to justify what he was doing and George was a drug addict and he was this and like making all kinds of excuses for the bullshit that the cop did you know what I mean so you know I was with everyone I, I was mad I was hurt it was it was disgusting but I was really proud of Jack um you know but if you think about it he led a he led a rally in a march that that not only hit the United States, but hit the whole world. You know, the biggest rally in the history yeah, of the biggest of, protest in the history of the, the world, world, actually. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, like, and he was front line with it. He was absolutely like you saw his face pushing. on day one. So that was my thing, man. It was just, you know, with him marching, I was, you know, trying to do the behind the scenes. I'm a policy person, you know. I mean, I try to, you know, help educate people on bills and get things passed and and, and you know just do whatever I could do from behind the scenes. But I was just, you know, here checking on him every once in a while, you know, not every once in a while, but often just make sure you take care of yourself, bro. Cause he was on a mission and I, I'm not sure how many cities he's hit, but I think he's in the forties, but he wanted to hit every single city with this, with this thing and, and go back and give and march and, and, and support the people. And, you know, he was, you know, he, he jacks the people's champ now, you know what I mean? And I, it's just to see, you know, his growth. And, and, and like you said, he didn't want this. It just, it was, it was, it was put on his porch and the way he's been able to run it, run with it and, and, and continue to bring awareness is, has, has been a, a, a great thing. Um, but it really, you know, if you think about it, shit ain't changed. Will it ever change? Who knows? But, you know, like I said, it was, it was, it was, it was great what he did and all those other people did um, and everyone did to come out and show support, you know, on, on police brutality. Yeah. I mean, I got to inter interview uh, George Floyd's brother, Terrence Floyd. Okay. And, um, you know, really kind of get into the whole story and sort of see, you know, we, we didn't know George Floyd, mm -hmm. you know, to see the effect of someone's family member going through that and him actually showing up to trial. Mm -hmm. And, you know, looking the cop in his eye and at one point even being alone in the room with him, he could have done something to him, mm -hmm. but he didn't. And, mm -hmm. you know, it's, uh, yeah, I mean, it changed the world. Is it going to, you know, do people have a short memory with this, this type of thing? Yeah. But at least it went to court and the court spoke loudly. Yeah. And not like I said, I mean, like all the cops got went to jail over that. But I hope they really have to serve that time because his life will never come back. And too often you see when, 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 you know, police finally do the right thing and then they're prosecuted for, uh, you know, the crimes they commit, they serve a sliver of that time. You know what I mean? They serve a couple of years and sneak out and, and, and change states or change cities and, and, and go start again. You know what I mean? So, I yeah. mean, that's obviously a, a deeper conversation, but you know, I hope these guys serve the time and then and, and just cops start realizing, man, it's just it's 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 crazy out here. Man. There's just so many killing, killing each other, cops killing, people killing. It's just it's a scary time right now um, for the world. Well, yeah, me and you live in L.A. The PNB rock thing just yeah, happened. man. I, I mean, I, I got to say, I mean, ju just to be fair. I know where that Roscoe's is. Yeah. In South Central. In there. I smoked a joint out there with some people before. Like, I, you've yeah. got to know your, but go ahead. I would not go and, and have a meal there by myself without security. If someone recognizes me, it might turn into an, an actual issue for me. You, you know what I'm saying? And I'm, I'm not that famous. So I'm, right. I'm just known, right. but I just know that people feel some type of way about me. And, mm -hmm. and if, oh, yo, Vlad's in here. Mm -hmm. People start texting mm -hmm. each other, start Instagramming or whatever. Mm -hmm. I could potentially run to a problem. You take that and you throw a bunch of jewelry around my neck. And like TK Kirkland said, it's it's insane yeah. to actually go into a Roscoe's in the hood I with a hundred thousand dollars. It's, like, it's like going in a lion cage with, you know, meat around your neck. You exactly. know what I mean? That's that's what it's like. And it's it's weird because you see this whole thing with checking in and, and people checking well, in. Well, and, and your co host was talking about that. And people and I and I saw people were laughing like, oh, you're too grown. You're trying to act this. You're trying to act that. And what people have to understand, man, when you go to some of these cities where they're not playing games like you need to, you need to check in with somebody, especially if you're going to be moving. And then even checking in, you still got to know your surroundings. If you look at that Roscoe's and see how many neighborhoods are around there. 
<laughs> yeah, no, I mean, my man BG oh, Knockout, man. he broke it down. He I was mean, like, yo, South on, Central man. Cartel, their gang is right come there. On, LV, man. his gang is right there across the street. Come it's on. He's and a Saweet over there. It's, sits right it's, it's right. It's right there. in Gang Central with a you know bunch I mean? of real so, serious gangs all around. Yeah, so you, and you, it's, you have to know where you're at. And then one thing, and I'm not blaming, like, t we don't know what happened. We don't know how they found him. If, if yeah. someone in there called, if there was a social media well, yeah, his stuff. baby mother... Well, and, and, and that's, and that's and another thing is that I've always been very conscious of, I never go live or I never post my location where I actually am. No one around me is allowed to do it. And I don't know if that was the reason or not, but you know, that's what happened to Pop Smoke. If you think about it, he's on Instagram live showing the address of the street he's on, a bunch of designer clothes with hundreds of thousands of dollars with the jewelry on. And, and people out here, man, I mean, oh. they're they're broke. Like like that chain could really, in their minds, they could think that their whole lives could change someone if they just this, had that chain in their hands. This is Killer Cali, man. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like 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 someone said. So it's just there. There's, you know, and you get caught up sometimes. You know, I have my girl likes to post. You know what I mean? And we have a thing. You know, unless it's really safe and, and the kids aren't home and we're out having a good time, like we can show what we're doing. But for the most time, it's a film it and post it later type situation, you know what I mean? So again, I'm not point blame. It's, you know, instead of trying to point blame, we need to, you know, figure out why this keeps happening, you know, more than anything. But like I said, we know why it happens. You know what I mean? It's just people are out here hungry and people are out here ready to do whatever. And you really got to be careful out here. Like I said, I'm 42. I've been in LA since 98. You know, and I have my fair share of ripping and running and going to clubs and being in neighborhoods and doing all kinds of different shit. But it's just like, you know, as it, each year passed, it's just like it continues. And it's always been bad, but it's been really bad now. Like, it used to be certain areas. Now it's, they'll get you wherever. Oh, yeah. I remember in, uh, in Beverly Hills, Beverly the Hills guy with the Richard Mill watch. The damn Beverly shootout Hills. happened right there at an Italian restaurant I'm over in that Encino, watch. I'm in Encino, man. And then a couple blocks over, you know, stick-ups, robberies. It's just like, yeah. it's just like there's no, it's not in a certain area no more, man. So you just really got to, like you said, you got to have respect for where you're going and know where you're going. I mean, I'll be honest though, the whole checking in thing, that bothered me a little bit, right? And, and I'll explain why. I, I know guys all around the country also. I, I could call up whoever, they'll mm -hmm. send a guy for me, whatever mm -hmm. else. But at a certain point, you have to understand that if you're really serious about your safety, instead of checking in, just get actual security. Yeah. Like I use, you know, ex-LAPD guys. My main guy is ex-LAPD. If we need more than him, he'll bring in other guys. These are actual, you know, licensed to carry. If a shootout happens, they're, they're not going to say, I don't know what happened. Mm -hmm. Like some of these guys that you check in with. Mm. You know what I'm saying? In Nipsey's trial, mm. his homies would not take the stand. His killer could have potentially gotten off. Like, for example, Rimpow, who was right there when it happened, refused to even go to court. There was a ha half a million dollar you know, warrant for his arrest over that shit. It's the code, man. It, that's what I'm saying. When you get actual security, they will legally shoot somebody and then go wait until the cops arrive, give a statement, and they'll take the stand. And most times, l l let's just be honest, right? If there's some dudes around you that want to rob you, if there's someone next to you who looks like a cop. They might think twice. Th they're definitely going to think twice. Because no one, one cop will make a hundred gangsters scatter. Yeah. Right? When you check in with someone, number number one, you know that guy, but you don't really know that guy. You know what I mean? There's gangsters in every neighborhood. And I've interviewed a lot of them, right? Mm -hmm. look, look at me. I've interviewed some of the biggest gangsters ever. <laughs> I could go into damn near any city and call the OG and have right. them send whoever, right? right? But here's the thing. I don't know who that person is completely. I didn't mm -hmm. grow up with them. Right. And the person he sends, I, I, I know probably even less. And what if they have their own set of problems? And how well do they, and they're not legally, you know, they're probably not legally licensed to carry. Yeah. Yeah. If they shoot somebody, they're going to say, they're probably just going to run <laughs> and and, and mean, not say nothing. And then you're going to get blamed for this shit. And that's what I'm saying. Like for, for, for Stack to say that, being his age and his salary and everything else like that, I felt like at this point, why, why don't we just push actual security? Why don't we push actual professional professional guys as opposed to the check-in? Yeah. And this is just me talking. Yeah. I'm sure he'll disagree with me. No, it's, it's not that I disagree. It's just, I mean, it's just, 
it's the code out here. You know what I mean? You just have to understand, you know what I mean? So whether you're from here, live here, been here for a long time, like there's just certain things out of respect that people do. Like, I'm not saying anything you said was wrong. I mean, if you're in some, in somewhere and you're wearing a lot of jewelry or you feel like you could be a target, you probably need security. You know what I mean? So to me, it's a fucked up situation. Um, you know, I try to stay out of the politics. You know, like I said, I know people from all sides, neighborhoods and colors. You know what I mean? I've been out here long enough. So just to me, it's just you always got to know where you're going. You always got to know somebody, whether you have security with you or not. You know what I mean? Sometimes security ain't even enough. Like they don't, motherfuckers don't, just don't care no more. So you just have to really be careful. You know what I mean? But one thing about it is, is, you know, is is people working so hard these days and, 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 and you know, they want to show it. They want to, you know, I luckily I've never been a jewelry guy. You know what I mean? I remember back in the day they used to just snatch chains. You know, now they're, you know, now they're snatching your life. You know what I mean? So to me, yeah. it's just like you got to if you're going to be wearing jewelry in certain areas, you definitely need either some some hitters with you or some real security. Because, like I said, these people don't have anything and I'm not justifying what they're doing. It's just the facts of life. And if they want to come for you, they're going to come for you. Or you just chuck in your chain and leave your watch in the car. Don't just you know, me, don't wear it. Yeah, or don't. I mean, have you ever had a situation where someone robbed you or tried to rob you? Or no, no. I mean, nothing. heaven forbid, no. Nah. Yeah, thank God. Heaven forbid. Yeah, I got robbed once in Mexico by the police. I believe it. <laughs> you know, what I'm saying, literally, they rolled up on me, took my wallet, took the cash out, and gave it back to me and drove yeah, off. I, I always, I don't, I just keep cash in my pocket in Mexico. Like, bro, you can have this shit. <laughs> right? No, I was, I wasn't resisting because yeah. I didn't want to end up yeah. in, in a Mexican jail. So I was like, yo, take or whatever you want. Or a fucking ditch. Fuck a jail. It might end up in and, a... Yeah, end up, end up in a hole somewhere. Yeah, like, you can have it, bro. Well, speaking of jail, uh, Brittany Griner's still locked up. Man, Do you know her personally? I met, I wouldn't call us friends. We've definitely, we're, we're cool. We spoke on social media. I've seen her in person. Like, I think she's a cool person. Really cool person. Well... <sighs> She was making $200,000 in the WNBA. She went to Russia and she was making $2 million. Ooh. The way that Gilbert Arenas uh, described it to me is that she's the Michael Jordan of Russia. Like she's a big deal believe over it. there. I believe it. She's got game. But now she's sitting with a nine year prison sentence for over some, some vape pens. For some cartridges. Some cartridges. It's, I mean, first it speaks to. You know, the fact that these women still have to find second jobs, so to speak. You know, if you're That's playing, exactly yeah, it. It's a second know, job. These women have to find second jobs. If you you know you're a WNBA star, you know, you still have to find, you know, stuff to 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 to, to make it. And I mean, obviously that's a, a whole conversation in its own, but you know, to think that a couple cartridges can get you sat down for nine years is is unbelievable. But at the same time, again, like you kind of just have to, again, know where you're going, know your surroundings. You know what I mean? If that's, and I'm, and, and I'm a habitual rule breaker, so I'm no <laughs> one to be preaching. I've, you know, I've been taking weed with me, but it's just like, you know, when you go in certain places, you, you just kind of have to understand what is going on. And I'm not blaming her. I'm not blaming, no, I'm not putting the blame on no one, but it's, it's, it, now it's a fucked up situation where someone who should be back here, you know, just finishing up a WNBA season is, is, is sitting in prison, in real prison, and they're trying to, you know, trade somebody for her who's really who's really put in some work in this world and they're trying to trade someone who had a couple cartridges for that person so it's just it's a mess oh yeah they're trying to change trade uh was the lord of war <laughs> like a massive russian that, hey, arms hey, dealer that, that name alone man i don't want <laughs> i don't even want to know nothing else about him like it's just like it's you know there's certain shit that i don't need to know nothing about <laughs> right they, they did a movie about it right i, I believe it <laughs> all right but but here, here's the interesting thing is A whole bunch of American players, mostly men, are now going to Russia to play even now. A whole bunch, some of them with NBA backgrounds and so forth, because Russia is offering a 50% salary increase from last year. 30 men from the U.S. are actually going there, which is double from last year. The fact that a man has to go to Russia in the middle of a war when the um, when the U.S. says people should not visit Russia right now, like that, that's an official statement. Much less a basketball player, considering what's happening. The fact that a person and you know there's a New York Times article about this, where the guys are like, "Hey man, look, I gotta support my family. I gotta pay my bills." And it's just like, wow, like your 
money is so serious, you're going to go over there and potentially end up being a prisoner of war because whether we want to admit it or not, we're really at war with Russia. We're just doing it indirectly. We're, we're funding the Russian war, mm. right? Mm. We're not putting troops there because we don't want to start World War II, but we're sending billions of dollars over there. So it's not like the U.S. and Russia are cool right now. I'm motherfucking clean drinking water in Jackson. But yeah, no, I hear you. I, 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 yeah. I definitely hear you. Yeah, that, that I mean, I'm, it, it's, you know, it's people got to take care of their families. People, First of all, people don't really care what the government says or the president says. You know what I mean? At the end of the day, like if this is the best chance for these guys to make some money, like you're a Brittany Grind making $2 million over there. Like I don't know how much these guys are making, but if this is the spot for them to go over there and make some real bread, I think people are going to take chances. Just like people are taking chances in the street, they're going to take their chance in Russia trying to get that bread. So Yeah, it's kind of like that. Yeah. You know, it's, 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 it's a tough look and it's a tough situation for Brittany, but motherfuckers like that's not, you know, like they said, what are they? I got to feed my family. You know what I mean? So Right. They can make up to a million dollars over there. But what's interesting is that Russia's paying triple what the other countries in Europe are paying. Yeah, because I'm sure they don't want it to ruin, you know, the, this is, no matter what they got, this is the black eye, you know what I mean? Like this whole movement, this whole situation is, everyone knows they they put extras on this situation, so they still want to kind of try to keep that pipeline open for sports, I guess. Mm. So they're, you know, they're paying people, you know, more money to, to, to come over there, but you know, you're, you're, you're risking your life everywhere you go, but particularly you're going to risk your life there. <laughs> over there, I mean, because, because remember, there was the other guy, I think he was a teacher. I think he got like he was down for a 12 years or something yeah. for like mm -hmm. a few grams of, yeah. you know, marijuana. I, I couldn't go there, period. Like I smoked too much to go there. So I just, that's just not even on my list. Well, but, but here's the crazy part. For example, we had, uh, you know, Fredro Starr is a regular guest here of Onyx. Mm -hmm. And Onyx's biggest uh, market was Russia. Oh, really? Yeah, slam, like, you know, <laughs> the, the heavy metal <laughs> shit. Like, yo, the Russians love that <laughs> shit. <laughs> yeah. And he was like, Yo, he smoked mad weed over there. Oh, really? He said he he was saying the weed is better than Cali. I mean, I'm sure that's a little. It's a probably you just, you just had to be in a certain. You know, you got to be with certain. He probably checked in. You know, <laughs> Vlad, he checked in and he knew where to get the tree. He, he knew where to smoke. In. You know what I mean? You got like people laugh no. at it, man, but it's it's it's, it's right. a real thing. But but what what he's saying is is that it's really it's really politics right yeah. now. Russia smokes. It's not yeah. like, for example, Saudi Arabia. Like Saudi Arabia. Like a zero tolerance. A zero tolerance. Yeah, no. Like, yo, they'll no. really, you know, this is, this throw is you in prison this forever. This is politicking. This, this is, is all politicking, politicking at the Russians highest level. Russians smoke weed. They have indoor yeah. grow farms. Mm -hmm. It's it's tolerated. It's Come not on, like man. America, but it's, it's overall it's tolerated. It's, it's the fact she got, a, and from what I understand, Brittany has gotten caught with vape cartridges before and stuff like that. It's like, ah, whatever. But mm -hmm. now it's like, oh, okay, here's an opportunity yeah, it's a to black, make this it's big a black, statement. It's a black woman going into another country and breaking a rule. I mean, however small or big it may be, like they want to make an example out of it. Yeah, and they're and they're succeeding in this shit because everyone's paying attention yeah, right man, now. I'm praying and for her and her family. I hope so too. I mean, from what I understand, the talks are stalled. Uh, Russia is blaming the U.S. The U.S. is blaming Russia. But yeah, the talks are stalled. And yeah, I mean, you're you're trading this massive arms dealer for crazy. a girl who's got some vape pens. It it is an uneven trade. Like it, it is, and I'm sure that's weighing on yeah. you know Biden's you know psyche mm -hmm. and so forth. But I hope, you know, and then there's the whole thing that there, there's rules in Russia that if you're a prisoner, but you have a special skill, you could be allowed to utilize that skill they instead of actually coach? sitting in prison. Yes. There's actually articles about this that they're saying that she'll probably be coaching <laughs> a, a female basketball team over there. Hey man, if she actually has to serve out her sentence. And, and, th and think about it. I mean, she's going to take it. Would you rather oh, sit man. in a cell or, or go hang out on a basketball court? I'd be saying, fuck you the whole time in my mind, but I'd be talking about, like, where's the car to take me to practice? I'd <laughs> right. be saying, fuck you the whole time. But it's, like I said, it's it, to me, they're trying to make an example. I think everyone sees that. It's, it's politics at the highest level. Mm -hmm. And we know people smoke weed over there, but it's just, like I said, it's about it's not about what you know, it's about who you know. But, you know, I mean, you talked about the whole salary thing, how she's making, two, you know, 200000 in the WNBA, being a top player. I mean... The issue itself is that a lot of people don't watch women's basketball. You go to these games, they're not selling out like a Lakers game. Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah, certain markets, there's a bigger following than others. Mm -hmm. But overall, if you go to a WNBA game, it's not packed out and mm -hmm. crazy. And ultimately, it comes down to the money. You can't give someone $10 million if you only have a million dollars in profit that year. The numbers got to work out. The numbers, a, have, the numbers a, have to work. It's a numbers game. 
You know what I mean? And I've been to, uh, I'm a fan of WNBA. I've, I've gone to games, uh, you know, I watch it on TV sometimes. And, you know, it, it, it's definitely a growing space. But like you said, at the end of the day, it's a numbers game. And as, as much as they may want to pay or not want to pay, like when they're not making the amount of money or driving yeah. the revenue or having the po- uh, sponsorship and partnerships the NBA have, you won't see women being paid like men. And that's right. not a knock on anyone. It's just how the numbers work out. You got to make, you know, make money to pay money. Right. And the reality is, I think like Bill Burr was making jokes about this is that women don't even watch women's basketball like that. You know what I'm saying? Like you don't have this huge movement of women supporting yeah. women's sports, yeah. unfortunately. Yeah. Women's tennis, I think, is the is the anomaly in this equation. Because yeah, Serena is a big deal and she gets mm-hmm. compensated a lot. Mm-hmm. And, you know, like Naomi, it's like you have superstars mm-hmm. in tennis but that's more of a solo sport. Mm-hmm. You know, I mean, even though you have doubles, but you know, in general, it's a solo sport as opposed to a team sport, but still you just don't have that in women's basketball. Now, maybe we just haven't had the player yet. Maybe we haven't had the, the Michael Jordan of the WNBA come in and just. I mean, there's some really talented women out there and I, and, and I don't know what it is. I mean, is it, is it the, I'm, I'm guessing it has to be the athletic factor. Because outside yeah. of that, women are skilled as shit. Right. You know, like I've seen these women, can, people talk shit, but they'll bust these dudes' ass talking shit. But these women can really play. It's just maybe the athleticism on the consistent basis that 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 they're not providing that people feel like they're not. Because, I mean, that's what makes, obviously, the NBA is filled with skill. But the athleticism is what makes you say, oh, shit, you see LeBron dunk on so-and-so or you see Giannis dunk on so-and-so. Mm-hmm. Like, that's what we're talking about, you know, and you don't really necessarily get that. So, man, that would be my only guess. As, as of why the game is not where it is. But I have a, a fond appreciation for these women. These women are out here very skilled. They can hoop. But it, like I said, it just hasn't caught on the way people are hoping it catches on. I mean, what do you think about trans players potentially playing for the WNBA? Do you I think that, like that. that'll potentially change it? Or do you I, think I, it'll I, I, I think, you know, I, I think if, and, and this is a deep breath, to each his own. You want to be, <laughs> you wanna be whatever you want to be. But, I mean, if you're born a certain, you should play it. Whatever you're born, I, to me, I feel like you should play in that space i feel like you see because to me it's just you see that the swimmer and all this kind of stuff and again i'm pro make your choice do you do this but you know sports is different you know i mean sports is a different is is a different beast you know you saw i think you've seen a trans fighter too right yeah yeah you know what i mean it's just to me it's i don't like that if you're born a woman i think you should play women's sports and if you're born a man you should play man's sports but if you want to be you know, you want to, you know, do whatever you want to do with your life. I respect that. It's not my business, but you know, I mean, I just think the sports thing is is just a little different. Well, yeah, I mean, you saw with the swimmer uh, ended up winning a championship on the women's side, where on the men's side he was ranked side. like 150th or something on the like men's that. Side. And I, I've always said, like, imagine if Kevin Durant put on a wig and joined the WNBA, like, what would happen? It'd be like a hundred to zero, like every it would, game. It would change the whole dynamic of the game. Yeah. You know what I mean? So it's just like to me, I just like in to each his own respect, you know, whatever personal decisions you want to make. But when it comes to sports, it's just I think crossing that line is a line that shouldn't be crossed. Yeah, I mean it was uh, I think it was Gilbert Arenas. I think his girls ha well, I think one of his daughters played in a game with a trans player. Oh really? And actually won. He was saying how all the other parents were upset, but when he saw the trans player play, he was like, let, let it go. See, <laughs> see see what happens. Because because a lot of times, Gilbert, man. yo, I mean, a lot, you know, just because you're trans doesn't mean that no, you're, it you're just no, it's not, not actually like better. Like, yeah. yeah, You might just not be shit, period, in sports. And that's, <laughs> it just is what it is. <laughs> just is what it is. You and Doc Rivers uh, had issues at one point. Yeah. I remember you talked about this in uh, All the Smoke. Mm-hmm. What exactly happened? Uh, I was just, again, I could be coached all day. I just didn't like that I was being disrespected as a man for something that really wasn't even on me. It was on two of my other teammates, but he decided to take it out on me that day. And I was going through a divorce at the time. He was going through some shit, and we just butted heads. And, uh, you know, it almost got ugly. But Doc made sure I was the first trade <laughs> as soon as the trade deadline hit <laughs> at the end of that season. <laughs> But we're fine now. You know what I mean? I have no, like I said, it's, it's, it is what it is. It's business. You know what I mean? It's never, to me, I don't ever look at shit 
personal. You know, it's it's too much of a business. Uh, you know, I had a chance to get to know Doc and play for Doc. I had a good time. I didn't always agree. But again, like that, you know, where I drew the line is you can coach me as as a, be my coach, cuss at me, scream at me, but just don't disrespect me as a fan. And I thought I felt he crossed that line and you know, that's why I had to say something. But you know, that's what got me up out of the Clippers. Mm. Well, uh, since our last interview, uh, Derek Fisher and Gloria got married in mm-hmm. 2021. And from what I understand, you're on great terms yeah. with everybody. Mm-hmm. How, did that take a while? To, no, to really not develop? for me. You know, not for me. Like I said, it's, uh, you know, at the end of the day, you you, you look at things and, and understand what, 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 the, what the bigger picture is. And, you know, Gloria and I had fell out of love. And, you know, it's been well discussed what happened next. But... Um, you know, it, it was for the it was, it was for the kids. You know what I mean? Like my kids, I knew that at the time when everything happened, like he was seeing my kids more than I was because I was still playing. I was on the road, and you know, once we squashed it, I told him as a man why I did what I did and the way I felt. He, you know, explained his side, and then I hit him with some real shit. Like, bro, we got to raise these kids to be. You know, we got two young men right here. We gotta you gotta help me raise these boys. You gotta discipline, show them right from wrong, and all that kind of shit. Because to me, like I said, once I divorced Gloria, like. I had moved on, she had moved on, you know? So it, it wasn't about her and I's dynamic no more. It was about, okay, well, shit, we made these two boys, so who's, you know, who's gonna be in their lives? You know what I mean? So that was the, the perspective I took on it. And that's not to say we haven't had some bumpy times here and there, but for the most part, you know, the situation is great. You know, I wish them the best, you know, with their marriage. She was helping me coach the Twins team for a little bit. So, mm. you know, it, it, it to me, like the love was gone for me. So it wasn't so much about uh, like, to me, it's just about, you know, how are we going to, you know, raise these young men and, and, and then hats off to him. He stepped up and has been a great, you know, I guess they're calling him bonus dads. Now they don't call, they don't say step no more. They're called bonus Bo- dads. Bonus dad. I'm a bonus dad. So, you know, he's been a great I, bonus dad. I don't dad know if I them. like that. Bonus dad. Yeah, I guess it's, it, I don't know if it's. I, cool. I like stepdad. Yeah. Step, I'm going stick with stepdad. Yeah. So whatever it's called, he's done, a, you know, he's done a great job of, you know, being a, a you know, a, a, a figure in their life when they're with their mom and, you know, I'm doing me when I'm, when, when I have them. So no, uh, no beef, no drama, no more. He and I are cool. She and I are cool. And, and, and the boys are happy. And to me, that's what it's about. Yeah. I remember there was like an instance where, where your girl, now posted a picture, I think, with the boys, and Gloria <laughs> yeah. got upset at the yeah. picture or something. And there was some back and forth there. Yeah, like I said, it hasn't been. It hasn't been. <laughs> There's been. It a hasn't few. been perfect. It hasn't. Been, it's been rocky right. here and there. You know what I mean. But uh, you know, at the end of the day, it's. You know, I can't speak on you know why she was in her feelings. You know, when my girl posted that shit, but it didn't. It didn't. Doesn't matter to me. You yeah. know what I mean. Like I said, we're doing our part when we have the kids. When she and when she has the kids, she's doing her part. So outside of that, nothing really matters. Right, and I think at one point, didn't your lawyer sue her for one hundred ninety thousand, which um, they eventually dropped? We know we were in court for some other shit. We were in some court. We were in court for some other uh, <laughs> some shit that shouldn't have happened. But uh, no, I got I, I got my money. Okay, <laughs> yeah. And, and uh, Derek, I mean, he was coaching the LA Sparks, but he parted ways with them last year. Mm-hmm. Is he actually working now? And I don't know. I like, like we not tight like that. Like we cool. Oh. When we well, see I mean, each I just other. think it's yeah. just around the kids. Nah, maybe. nah. Okay. I don't know. I don't. I don't. I don't. I don't. Yeah, I don't. I don't, definitely don't keep up with bros got going on. Like I said, when we see each other, it's respect, and that's about it. I love it, man. I love it. Grown man shit. Yeah, you got it. I mean, you got to Come on, man. I'm 42 now. Like I can't. I got too much real shit to worry about than worry about with shit I ain't got no control over, I, and be mad at people. Like mm-hmm. I said, like you know, when you asked me earlier if I want to box, like there's no one I don't dislike enough to want to box. Like I, like I'm in a great place, happy family, huge big family. You know, life after basketball has blessed me like I couldn't imagine. So I'm, you know, I'm on, I'm, I'm on a different frequency right now. So I'm not really worried about shit in the past or shit below me. So no one you want to be like a George Zimmerman? You wouldn't get in the ring with George Zimmerman? I'd get in the ring with George Zimmerman. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, man. At 49, yeah. I said I'm not yeah. gonna box nobody. Yeah. But if I got a chance to box George Zimmerman, yeah. I, mean, I, I, would, a, I would I would get in the ring with George Zimmerman. That's a, you don't have to pay me for that one. That's that's a given. <laughs> but that's I don't like I said, I, like I, I don't know him. So <laughs> So what do you have coming up next? Because Season four. Season all four. Smoke. All the smoke is kicking off right now. You know, I'm 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 in the mix. I you know I have a, a multi year deal with ESPN, which has been fun and been a oh, blessing. What's going on with ESPN? Uh, yeah, I'm I'm there. I'm rocking. 
I got you know, yeah, yeah. I got okay. I got a nice little you can get some good money from them and, yeah. I, and I enjoy doing that. Um I do pregame, post game and halftime for the Sacramento Kings, so I get a chance to go home. Now I'm doing forty games for the Kings, which uh -huh. is dope. Um I'm doing some games for the Clippers now. The Clippers have this new streaming service they're working on, so I'm doing some stuff for okay. the Clippers. And then I'm also doing some stuff for OTE out in Atlanta. So I'm gonna make ten appearances for them and then do some commentating for them. You know, they got some some top uh ten draft picks uh playing in their league this year. So I mean, it's been crazy, you know, like obviously, you know, media was never a plan for me. I hopped in it and started doing pretty good and all these doors started opening now. So, man, I'm flying across the country to speak for a lot of money now. I'm sitting on panels to speak for a lot of money now. I'm getting opportunities to host. I'm getting opportunities to commentate. And, you know, to think about it, like it's it's. You know, I was never a star. You know, I was a role player. I knew my role, and that's why I played as long as I played. But, you know, to, to, to think that, you know, that these doors have been opening is because I think the way I move, I move the right way. You know what I mean? I'm not perfect by any means, but, you know, what you see is what you get. And I think people have an appreciation for that, especially in, 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 the, in the sports and media space that I'm in. So, you know, things have been great. My goal is to, you know, transition into overall media, you know, similar to what Michael Strahan's been able to do, to be able to, you know, cross over and make that daytime jump um he's someone i look up to in this space so i just feel like i've been through so much shit in my life man from you know functioning drug addict parents to abuse to violence to jail to divorce to fights to career to child support to <laughs> baby moms like, i have been through a lot my mom dying from cancer like i've been through so much and i just feel like you know i've been able to show the world who i am as a person now not so much as an athlete anymore and they've been very accepting and they've been you know Pay me good money to just talk, and which is crazy. You know what I mean? I smoke my joint every morning, and I go on TV and talk and get paid for it. Like, you can't tell me that's – I got another dream job. You know, I got to play in the NBA for 15 years. That was a dream. And now I get paid to talk about it, which is which is a blessing. So, uh, you know, there's definitely no complaints. Isn't that crazy that you could actually get a bunch of money from talking? Like, I, every day I wake up and go, like, I could do an interview right now and make yeah. a crazy amount of money just from my voice, essentially. And the person I talked to. No, nah, it's, it's, it, it's, it's, it's bananas. It's wild. It's bananas. Paying this kind of money to talk? Yeah. Sign me up. Right. And you got a weed line. Yeah, so I got I do it a couple of things. I'm, I'm, I'm uh, doing some stuff with Chris Weber over at Players Only. He has a fund. Uh, I think it's like $300 million cannabis fund where he's really over there killing. Shout out my bro, C. Webb. We just launched the Smoke brand, so mm -hmm. you know to pick yeah, up, piggyback that. off, uh, you know our show, all the smoke, and then you I'll, can't call it all the smoke though. It's called All Smoke, the smoke, oh the smoke. There we go. Yeah, no. I, I saw it was like sort of a play. We're, we're, of we're it, under right. that Viacom umbrella. We got to be careful. Um, <laughs> and then you know I'm a small minority owner in Seven Leaves in Northern California with the cannabis space. So you know just trying to stay in it. You know it's something I've done for such a long time now, and and, and, and people are making a business out of it. You know, so I also advocate, or you know I'm an advocate for you know the uh, the social equity plans and, and, and trying to help people put, you know, get in position not only to receive money, but education behind it, you know, so they can be successful in this this cannabis business. So, you know, Vlad, I got no complaints, but I played 15 years, made some good money, won, and then I'm able to, you know, smoke weed, be a dad, and still make good money talking on TV. You know what I mean? So, you know, life is good. Yeah, man. What, what more could you ask for? Because Trust me, I've interviewed a lot of athletes over the years, and there's been some real horror stories yeah, man. along the way. I've seen it. Money getting stolen. I mean, Gilbert Arenas had like tens of millions stolen, which he luckily got back. Mm -hmm. I mean, there, there was a lot of players who really, you know, Andre Risen, mm -hmm. like a lot of players from different sports that were making tens, if not hundreds of millions of dollars, squandered it. Yeah. And then had to start over in their late 30s and 40s what's and next what's next you know because you're starting i mean sometimes you're you're you know you get a leg up on people because you're an athlete and sometimes that pushes you further down you know what i mean so it's just it's 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 a lot of god has to do with it but just kind of understanding like the shit goes out a lot faster than it comes in i don't give a fuck <laughs> right. how much money you're making you know what i mean yeah. so at the end of the day that red light's gonna come on you know what i mean and it's just you got to have the long game. You know, once I started, once I started having kids, I realized it wasn't about me anymore. It's about, you know, being able to make sure my kids go to the best schools, to make sure my kids live behind gates because we live in a crazy world, make sure my kids, you know, yep. don't need for anything. You know what I mean? So that's, you know, that's what I work for and that's what I continue to work for. So it's just like, you know, it's, 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 this is a, it, like, you know, what, what Nip said, man, this shit is a marathon. It ain't a sprint. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I, I, I want to have some longevity out here. 
That's what it is. Matt Barnes, man, always a pleasure. Right, Let's not no let doubt. three years pass again, you yeah, know, no doubt, our next interview. Yes, sir. And uh, wish you and your family all the best. Appreciate that, Vlad. Peace. Yes.